Coyotes 4-2 win on the road to mark the first victory of the Neil Collins era. The Rowdies 4-2 win on the road to mark the first victory of the Neil Collins era. Now the Rowdies are ready to kick off their homestand with the first ever matchup against Atlanta United 2. We're with you live from Al Lang Stadium in downtown St. Petersburg and your Rowdies pregame show starts right now. Thank you so much for joining us on the Rowdies pregame show on this TV, Tampa Bay. I'm Linton Blake alongside Eddie Rodriguez, and it is Military Appreciation Night here at Al Lang Stadium as the Rowdies are set for their match against Atlanta United 2, the first time the clubs ever meet. That's pretty exciting. 
That's right. You know, it's it's the first time Atlanta visits here, and they're going to have a, a great night here against a team who doesn't lose at home, a team who's eager to show their supremacy once again here at the home field. And last time we were here at the home field, a lot of change was happening, but it's nice to see the Rowdies kind of find their groove and get their first win under Neil Collins last Saturday. And that's pretty much exactly what they're doing. They're trying to find their groove. They went on the road. They finally won on the road. A very concise and very good win, 4-2, against a, a pretty good team. Now they get to do it here at home. They couldn't wait to come home. And it could be a very important night because Ristav can break the record tonight. Oh, yes. And let's get this pregame show started with some USL news and notes. Eddie? Well, Junior Fleming's too struggle at the beginning of the season, had a chance to redeem himself, had two great goals against Toronto. Nanchoff, he was awarded the goal of the week, and what a goal that was from about 35 out. And you see Georgie Ristov just one away from breaking the all-time rowdy record. Hopefully he can do it tonight here Hopefully at home. Hopefully he can. Now we're going to get a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Atlanta United 2 sits in 15th place, but this team has some big-time playmakers. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. The Rowdies, after their road win last week, they sit in 7th place in the East. Now for the injury update for the Rowdies. We have David Najem, a torn left ACL. He is out for the season. Cal Karinga is now day to day with his right ankle sprain. So there's some hopeful news there. And this week, unfortunately, we have to add Zach Portillo's to the list. He has a sprained left knee and he is now week to week. Yeah, and those are some of the things that uh, as a pro uh, team, you're going to see it, the little notch. You're talking about the knee sprains, the ankle sprains. So it's one of those things that as the season progresses, you're going to see it. This is when you need a deep roster. And when you get the coaching staff, they do a great job. So you got to get the next one up when, the goal, uh, when their number gets called up. That's the mentality. Now it's time to hear from Rowdy's head coach, Neil Collins. Our play-by-play -play announcer, Drew Felias, caught up with Neil a little while ago. Drew? It's awesome. I think we're off to a good start in a new era of coaching under Neely. I think we're all really excited about some of the ideas that he's implemented, and I know that he's also excited to see us really apply those on the field as well. But it feels good, obviously, to be back home in front of our home fans tomorrow. Well, we have, you know, like pretty uh, good confidence going to decide this game. I mean, you know, that's something huge for us, and we're hoping to build on it, you know, like keep the intensity of the training going and I think the result will take care of itself. Well it's obviously huge to be back at home. Obviously we had a bit of a rough patch on the road but anytime man obviously you can score a goal in any game. It gives you a little boost of confidence and for the general team morale I think it's been great. Um, like I said we're excited to play a few string of games here at home and look to accumulate as many points as possible. Well, obviously, that was the players. Well, let's talk a little bit about them. Michael Nanchoff got the USL goal of the week. He told us earlier this week in training that that was a huge boost of energy for him. And it's funny how a lot of his teammates say he's always the guy setting them up for goals. So it was nice for him to get him one last week. Yeah, it's always great when you have some of the center mates who are always setting up the forwards to score goals to finally get a chance. And you see Nanchoff with a great 30, 35 yard shot, you know, just to put the exclamation on the point, that great win. But as you mentioned, it's all about getting that momentum going forward with the coaching staff. Let's hear from the coaching staff. And now we have Drew Velio standing alongside Neil Collins from a little while ago. Drew. A little windy out here on the pitch tonight, but it's the hottest night by far this season. Do you think that's going to work to your benefit tonight, coach? Um, you never know. You know, it's, uh, there's one case for teams come in, they deal with the heat for one for 90 minutes and get out. You know, we've had, we haven't trained in it all week this week, so hopefully we can use it to our benefit, but it'll be the football that matters always. You always stress, and you did it this week again, putting guys in positions where they're going to be successful. We saw an example of that last week. Do you hope that continues tonight? Yeah, definitely. I couldn't ask any more from the players since I've been here. Uh, their, work, their work ethic, their attitude to training has been spot on. If they take that out tonight, I've got no concerns about them at all. Three straight matches at home. This is where it all begins, Coach. How excited are you? Yeah, really excited. You know, I love playing here. It's one of the only things I miss about this job is I don't get to run out here tonight. But I'm genuinely excited about watching the team. When you prepare Monday to Friday, tonight's where you get to see if the work you know, pays off. Final question, Coach. It's been a while since Georgie has had a goal. Can it happen tonight? It can always happen. When Georgie Ristoff's on this field, there's always a chance of a goal. It only takes a second, and I'd love to see him break the record tonight. If it does happen, it would be a record. Coach, thank you so much. And again, Eddie, earlier this week in training, all the players are saying Neil has transitioned so easily from that player to the coach. Well, that's one of those things that when you respect them as the next teammate uh, uh, 
now you got to respect him as a coach. And as I said earlier, uh, last couple of weeks, he's got established him as a coach now, not as a player. He's doing that on the pitch. He's doing that with results, not only wins, but just the way the team is playing, he's doing a great job so far. Sure he is. Well, guys, we have a lot more action coming up on the Rowdies pregame show here on This TV Tampa Bay. We'll see you in two minutes. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, we're throwing out blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home, throwing out blue you can, can you feel it? That vibe, it's here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Welcome back to the Rowdies pregame show here on This TV Tampa Bay. A lot of little ones out there getting in on all the action. It's a beautiful night tonight here at Alling Stadium, and it is Military Appreciation Night, so we hope everyone is having a good time and honoring those who have served us. Absolutely, those who, you know, put their lives to defend our country, and you see the little ones taking their shots <laughs> on goal early tonight. Future Rowdies out there. <laughs> now it's time to relive all the action from last week. Here's Drew Felios. They recap from the Rowdies game against Toronto. Drew? All right, guys. It was a big win last week. Usually we're doing these after coming off the road, and the highlights usually don't look so good, but that's not the case here this week. It was the first road win and first win period of the Neil Collins era. The Rowdies started off in the 24th minute some nice build up here Marcel Schaefer whipping one in for Junior Flemings and he knows what to do with it one nothing Rowdies less than a minute later Flemings looking for an option and he finds Joe Cole Cole's going to take the shot it's denied comes out and Leo Fernandez is going to take the shot that's blocked and look who winds up with it Michael Nanchoff his first goal of the season amazing how this transpired rebound after rebound but the Rowdies staying cool, and Nanchoff scoring the USL goal of the week. Congratulations to him. Second half now, Luca Petrasso settling things, sends one in, and Dante Campbell will score for Toronto. So the Rowdies' lead was cut in half to the 63rd minute. Luca Ucello on the counter, acres of space here. Just slides one over Malik Johnson. That's just too easy. We were even at two to the 73rd minute. Rowdies with the pressure on, on the road, come up big. Marcel Schaefer, free kick. Hunter Gorski, oh yeah. Gorski's first goal of the season. Rowdies were feeling it. Very confident coming down the stretch to the 88th minute. In the clear, watch Junior Flemings. The athleticism, the speed, the confidence. This is what we've been waiting for all season long. And he buries it to the back of the net, four to two. Rowdies get the win, the first of the Neil Collins era. So, guys, you take that win coming into tonight, first game of a homestand. Hopefully that momentum keeps going. 
And it's so nice to see Junior Flemings have that big game. And of course, Michael Nanshoff and Hunter Gorski get their first goals of the season. So Eddie, what does this do for the Rowdies mentality coming off such a great offensive performance? Well, that's a great point you bring up because getting on the road and finally getting the result, finally getting those goals, as you're talking about, Flemings struggled throughout the season earlier. Now he was able to come back, put two huge goals in the back of the net. What he does, he brings the, uh, the morale up. Now they're eager to play here at home and get the three points tonight. And that match was a lot of fun for the Rowdies. And this is a pretty fun story for them, too. Florida is the, lame, the land of theme parks. From Busch Gardens to Disney to Harry Potter World, it's time to find out what are the favorites of the Rowdies. I think I'm going to go with Magic Kingdom just because my children are very young. Uh, We've been there loads of times, love it, it's special every single time. Favorite theme park is uh, Magic Kingdom. Uh, it's, I mean, it reminds me the most of my, my childhood and it's probably my kid's favorite. Depends on my kids. <laughs> so we visit uh, a lot of times uh, Universal Studios and uh, I think Island of Adventure. Love Disney, uh, obviously with the kids and um, all the magic that happens. Yeah, big fan of Disney. Holiday World. It's in Indiana. It's an hour north of where I'm from, and they have the world's number one wooden roller coaster. Which is the one with uh, with the Toy Story ride? Hollywood Studios. That's the best. My favorite theme park is probably Universal, um, just because of the rides, the roller coasters. I went on like the, the I think it's Incredible Hulk like eight times in a row once. That was pretty cool. Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey, probably just because it's the one I've been to the most. So I know the layout and it's easy to get around and get to everything I want to get to. I'm going to have to say Six Flags. I'm a Jersey boy. Uh, South Jersey. Loved going down there when I was a kid. Uh, growing up in Dallas, I went to Six Flags a few times and I love roller coasters. So I used to do that a lot and, and that's fun. But, you know, for me, the crowds and the lines, skip that. <laughs> Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. I used to grow up uh, going there at least once every summer. So we'd try and go once a year, twice if we were lucky. Awesome roller coasters, best theme park in the whole world. Good stuff there. Well, the World Cup is among us. After the break, we'll hear all about the Rowdies' memories growing up watching the Cup. We'll see you in two minutes. You're watching the Rowdies' pregame show on This TV, Tampa Bay. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love. Like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo. Or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Jennifer Davis was the last person you'd expect to have a heart attack. But despite appearances, she had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection of the left anterior descending artery. But after being rushed to Baycare's St. Anthony's Hospital cath lab, doctors inserted two stents which opened her artery. And thank heaven this extremely rare attack was treated at an extremely rare hospital.
Welcome back to the Rowdies pregame show. It is a military appreciation night here at Alling Stadium. Everyone's out in the parking lot having fun for the big match tonight between the Rowdies and Atlanta United 2. Well, the World Cup kicks off June 14th, so not too far away. The Rowdy players are getting ready for it by reflecting on some of their memories from past cups, and they tell us about their favorite part of all the action on the world stage. My favorite part about the World Cup is it's just the amount of good quality football that's on the telly. And, uh, it's almost like the whole world stops for a month, you know, uh, people are you know, watching games all the time. It's the most exciting time for anyone that likes soccer. I think just being with fans and supporting your, your country is, uh, is a whole lot of fun. It's a celebration. Um, it's about people coming together, all different countries, and, and participating in something that everybody has in common. And, I think that's probably the biggest aspect of it, just the unifying factor of it is, is a beautiful thing. Uh, favorite World Cup memory is definitely 1994. Um, the World Cup was here in the US and uh, my country, when I, I was nine years old at that time, we finished fourth place and it was amazing. It was an amazing summer. Like, I remember almost everything. It was big celebrations in, you know, on the streets after you know, big wins. The Germans won uh, the World Cup in, in the 90s. My whole family was uh, cheering in front of the TV and yeah, I was part of it and it was a special moment for me in my childhood. Uh, my, one of my favorite was probably the US playing Ghana in uh, the last World Cup. Um, we were out with a bunch of friends and my wife and it was just such a fun experience and you know, scoring those goals, it was just the, the celebrations, it was like nothing I've been a part of, so that was, that was a lot of fun. When Brazil won the World Cup, I remember uh, Ronaldo scored two goals. He had like the, the little weird haircut on top. And I told my mom, I was like, hey, uh, I want to get the same haircut because, you know, he was our hero. So I was walking around with that little ugly thing he had in his hair too, but it was, it was fun. I loved it. My favorite memory as a fan is watching uh, Talia 90. Um, England had a real good tournament. We got all the way to the semi-finals and we nearly won it, but um, just for that whole thing was the reason that I, I wanted to play football, was watching it. 12 years after watching 1990 and decided I wanted to play for England in the World Cup. Um, everyone was in the box. I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit a shot here. And worst case scenario, if it goes wrong, you know, we won't get counted and we, we, we're ready. So. Um, I thought I just caught it lovely, caught it sweet, and it just went exactly, you know, where where I wanted it to go. And a um, lovely, great moment, exhilarating moment, yeah. Now that's pretty cool, Eddie. Any memories you would like to share with us? Well, some of the ones for me, of course, personally, the ones that I've had a chance to, uh, you know, see personally, Mexico in '86, and of course '94 here in the U.S. Those are special because, as some of the players said, you get to unite with so many people from different countries and truly just to get to see the passion of the game and what it's for. Just just great experience. It is a great, great time. And you should tune in next week to the Rowdies pregame show for part two of our World Cup series. We'll find out who the Rowdies are rooting for and how they plan to watch. And for more features and interviews like the one you just saw, be sure to follow all the Rowdies on social media. You can follow on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, so you don't miss out on any of the Rowdies updates throughout the week. Now let's get a quick look at the weather. Well, we all know it's hot. It's 81 degrees. It's clear, a low chance of rain at 10%, but that humidity is pretty high tonight at 75%. Well, we are so close to kickoff. When we come back, Eddie will scout the Rowdy's opponent, Atlanta United 2. It's the first time the clubs have met, so it should be a good one. We'll see you right after the break. Life, it's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. It's time to celebrate and save at Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale.
save 35% on furniture and mattresses. Or get 72 months no interest on new styles to celebrate your home. Going on now at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Hurry in and save at Ashley Home Store. This is home. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business. Always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Welcome back to the Rowdies pregame show. A lot of fun stuff going on outside Al Lang Stadium as we're getting ready for the big match against Atlanta United 2. Now, Eddie, you've been working hard all week scouting Atlanta. What do you think the Rowdies can expect in this contest? Well, that's right. This is one of those teams that don't get, uh, don't look at their record and say, well, they're 2 and 6. They're not very good. They're a very dangerous team, especially in the road. They're a team that's going to put good things uh, together going forward. They're going to be crucial on set pieces. I know this is their first year of playing. Uh, they're affiliated of the Atlanta United. And as I was saying, two, three, and six is not a great record, uh, uh, head coach Scott Donnelly. But this team, it's a very dangerous team. And you, you heard the coach in the interview. They're not afraid of anybody even coming here and playing against the Rowdies. Yes, and now here's a closer look at how Atlanta likes to play. Right here, you talk about set pieces. This is something they were trying in the last game against NCFC. Didn't quite work as well, but watch this. We're going to rewind it a little bit and see the formation. It's a very good piece. The ball gets played to number one. He's supposed to play the ball to two. Look at three, four, and five. Now six is far wide open in the far post. Number two misses the ball. He fixes that. Watch this. Crosses the ball. It was on, and that's how they almost got away against FCFC. Now it's time to hear from Scott Donnelly, Atlanta United 2's head coach. He's standing by with Drew Felios. Drew? Coach, a tough task for your team tonight. How do you come to a place like Tampa, be competitive, and even pull out a win tonight if you can? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I think Tampa's a good team. I don't see it as particularly a tall task. We're a good team as well. Um, for us, it's about consistency. So uh, for us, finding the consistency from game to game and throughout the 90 minutes is honestly uh, more important than the opponent. It's been your first year of competition here for this team. What have you learned about them up to this point? Um, yeah, you know, we've had we've had so many different um, combinations of lineups that we learn a little something each game. And so who plays well with who, who handles what type of situations well and where they struggle. Um, we've learned a lot about the individual players who might have the talent to uh, to move on and, and uh, play for the first team. And then uh, and then who needs a little more time. Biggest key tonight for your team. Uh, like I said, the start consistency um, play the 90 minutes first to last uh, at the same tempo with the same mentality. And uh, and yeah, really, that, that's the focus. Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks. Now, Eddie, what's your biggest takeaway from what Coach Donnelly just told us? Yeah, of course, he's talking about consistency. Listen, everybody needs consistency. He's talking about coming into the Rowdies. They know, and they've scouted the local team. They know that this is one of the best teams in the league playing at home. So they know they have a tough game. However, he's talking about if they worry about what they're supposed to do and defend well and hopefully get one, a corner kick, a set piece, and then they can sit back on that. But in the meantime, everybody can talk about consistency. You still have to execute. And to that, I would add, they have to be very good finishing, put away their chances if they want to be victorious against the Rowdies here tonight. And you're talking about set pieces. One of their guys has been consistent on set pieces is Mikey Ambrose. He had those two free kicks that resulted in goals a couple of games ago. And that's one of the things they do. They set on the set pieces. You, you talk about the two left-footed great free kicks outside the box. They go to a corner kick. They wait for something like that, and then they can afford to sit back a little bit. Then they can control the tempo of the game, which means the speed. They can control the time because they have their score. Now, when they're playing away like tonight, 
they got to take their chances go forward. If they score good, if not, they're going to sit back a little bit and play against a very good offensive team like the Rowdies. And this is a young and fast team in Atlanta. What's their biggest threat to the Rowdies? Uh, I would say inexperience. When you talk about a young team, when you talk about a team that, as the coach said, different line lineups every game. So tonight, if they come up with a different one, if the Rowdies can get their number, they can go ahead. Now you've been scouting some two key players we need to watch in the match. Let's start with Atlanta. And of course, for them, the catalyst, number 11, Laurent Kisido, right here. He gets the ball from 30 out, and he waited to get the ball back. Watch this once again. He's running along the side, but he's waiting. He's waiting. Now he gets the ball all by himself. He takes a touch to the outside. Great strike with the inside of his right foot to the back of the net. And that's why he's probably the better, uh, better players from Atlanta going forward. Junior Fleming's on the other side. We talked about his inability to score goals only in the year. Well, he finally got it done. Turn it on. Great runs going forward. Watch this ball. Cole not able to score. But this is in the final minutes of the game. Great breakaway. He takes his time. One and one against the keeper. And he's able to capitalize just like that to make it two on his own personal account. Yes, and we discussed earlier how difficult it is to play here in Al Lang Stadium. The Rowdies have not lost at home since April 2017, coming from a former player. How big of a deal is that? It's huge. You have it in your head that no matter what, this is your house, this is your home, and you're going to protect it. I know it sounds cliche, but trust me when I tell you, Players and coaching staff, they take pride in that, knowing that if you're going to score the goal, you're going to have to earn it. It's not going to come easy. And when teams come into this venue, you talk about the noise, you talk about the heat, you talk about the humidity here. And even though they're from Atlanta, it's not the same. They're not used to training in this type of heat day in and day out. So it's definitely going to be a factor tonight. It is a hot one tonight. And another thing, the Rowdies could score a lot of goals tonight, being that Atlanta has conceded the second most goals in the Eastern Conference with 25. That's a lot. And one of the reasons for that is different lineups. You don't get consistency with playing different players, especially defensively. You don't want to change your flat back four or three in the back. That's one of the reasons why they're giving up so many goals in the back. Well, we're almost to kickoff, Eddie. We'll see how it all plays out. Thank you so much for tuning into the Rowdies pregame show on this TV, Tampa Bay Rowdies versus Atlanta United 2 is up next. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. It was a much needed win on the road at Toronto and provided new energy for the Rowdies new head coach. Tampa Bay hosts Atlanta coming up next. Well, it's been a beautiful day, but a little bit warm here in downtown St. Pete. 
Al Link Stadium, the side for Tampa Bay as they host Atlanta. And we're thrilled to have you with us, everybody, alongside former MLS star Eddie Rodriguez. I'm Drew Felios. To say that win last week for the Rowdies was much needed is an understatement. The Neil Collins there off to a pretty good start, Eddie. What has been the biggest difference? Yeah, you're right, Drew. It was huge to win on the road. Just what they needed. But, you know, to answer your question, with the new coaching staff, they got that spark. They're rejuvenated. You can tell at practice that they're doing that little extra. They're trying to win games. They did it uh, away. Now's their chance to do it here at home tonight. All right. And that's for Atlanta. Good chance for three points tonight for the Rowdies. Atlanta is young, and they're struggling right now. And that's the thing. You want to take advantage against a team that is young, struggling on the road, struggling at home. Mm -hmm. So you need to put them away, especially here at home. Uh, it, this has been great for the Rowdies win. You know, the winning streak still up, so they need to win here tonight. All right, Atlanta does have some very exciting young talent. Guys like Laurent Kissadu. You don't check him, he could sting you quickly. Absolutely. He's the catalyst for this Atlanta offense going now. You see him here. He's going forward. He stays a little bit because he looks at all the marks. He gets the ball behind. But just like that, from about 35 out, Drew, he's lethal. He's good. And he just puts up all top shelf. You have to be careful if you're the Rowdies. And how about Junior Flemings? We watched him struggle the early part of the season. He finally busted out last week. And that's the thing, Drew. You and I talk about forwards. You know, they're opportunistic. Well, he struggled a little bit, as you mentioned. Not the last game. He scored two goals. Could have had another assist. And he's hot right now. He's on. And he loves to come home here this game tonight. He's looking to put a couple more in the back of the net. Yeah, very confident player right now is Flemings. Only 22 years old. Very, very talented. Kisadu, meanwhile, two goals on his side in 2018. Should be fun. Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Little ropes corks action going on outside of Al Lang Stadium. Rowdies in Atlanta coming up next. America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Just about to get underway, military appreciation night here in Al Lang Stadium, the Rowdies hosting Atlanta. Let's take a look at your formations, brought to you by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino for Atlanta. We've mentioned Kissadu and what he can do. Also, John Gallagher, number 26, five goals on the season. He'll be playing that left side for Atlanta. They've got Paul Christensen starting in goal tonight and for Tampa Bay with the 4-4-2 Rowdies committed 5-5 and 1 Junior Flemings red hot right now but Tam McCandleweary getting his second start at center back should be a huge difference maker let's send it down on the field now where Lyndon Blake is standing by 
Thanks, guys. You just mentioned a lot of changes in the Rowdies formation. Well, Neil Collins said, in soccer, you have to be ready to play any position at any time. And with all the injuries the Rowdies have taken on the defensive front, a lot of players have had to step up. And Neil Collins said he could not be more proud of the team and how they've all come together to fill in those gaps in the face of injuries. Guys? All right, Linda, thank you so much. There's our coaching matchup. Neil Collins. Only his third game as Rowdy's head coach. Scott Donnelly, meanwhile, spent 10 years in college soccer, had multiple roles with U.S. soccer as well. And he feels like Atlanta can come in here and steal one here tonight. We're underway at Al Lang Stadium. Atlanta in white, Tampa Bay Rowdies in the familiar green and gold. Atlanta with two wins on the season over Red Bulls, two in Toronto, and they're going to try and go to work early here. Called for an offside. See Akira Fitzgerald, who gets the nod for Tampa Bay in goal. He has started the last two games, made five saves, has conceded four times. Cody Mizell again on the bench tonight. Yeah, it was one of those situations that uh, Fitzgerald came in. He's done a good job stepping in. He's given up some goals, but, you know, the, the change was one of those from the new skipper, Neil Collins, just to shake things a bit. And it has definitely worked thus far. At the end of the day, it's about getting results that were able to prove that they can go on the road against Toronto, against a good franchise, and they were able to get the three points away. Well, tonight our official ball, of course, is Select, the official soccer ball of the USL. For the latest Select products and special offers, go to www.selectsportsamerica.com. Free shipping on orders over $50 as Fitzgerald touches one more time for Tampa Bay. There's our official tonight, J.J. Polinski leading the crew. Flemings, a target early, goes down just outside the 18, and will go the other way. And you can tell Atlanta is going to be marking number seven very tightly here tonight. Pretty tight, and that's uh, one of the things that uh, Tamika brings to this defensive shape. You saw that long ball into the space, looking for this man, Junior Flemings, who, as you mentioned, has been hot as uh, last weekend, scoring two. Oh, the four goals for the Rowdies. He's got the speed to get behind the whole entire defense. So you make those great penetrating runs. He's going to check to the ball. You want him to go deep. There's Paul Christensen, goalie for Atlanta. At the University of Portland, had 20 clean sheets as a collegiate. Making an impact in this Atlanta system here early as the Rowdies throw it in. Important to mention, Drew, that side of the field especially in the box where the Atlanta goalkeeper is sitting still pretty wet from the whole week. We took a lot of rain this entire week. And you can tell the way they're coming out very soft. Atlanta, good spot there. Kissadu with his first touch. He'll take a swing and Fitzgerald diving, making the save. So Fitzgerald put on point here early. And once again, you got to keep your eye on Kissadu because he's the catalyst for this Atlanta offense. And you saw as soon as he touched the ball, two of the closest router defenders closed the gap, closed the space. You do not want him sitting up, giving him a lot of time to have a look, especially going far post. He's got the ability to strike the ball from anywhere outside the 18. Atlanta will toss it in. Atlanta with nine points coming into tonight. Tampa Bay with 16 on their side. There's Jack Metcalf. Kissadoo. He is certainly somebody the rallies are going to have to take notice of as we've got our first whistle. So the Rowdies getting goals last week. Some players that you don't normally see in the scoring column. Guys like Nanchoff, Flemings as well. Hunter Gorski also got one last week. When you've got guys scoring that don't usually score, that's a very good thing. Oh, it's 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 great because first of all they're not expected to score second of all it tells you where the team is as far as you know players stepping up this early in the season you want some of the especially some of the midfielders who can add themselves going forward and score some goals it takes a little bit of the pressure off the target forwards or the forwards who are used to scoring all the time they have that pressure Atlanta possessing early 
Flemings gets airborne. And there's Roseboom tied up on the far side. And it's Roseboom getting another start here tonight. It's very important right now, Drew, for the Rallies to put the ball down, establish the system of play. They're a very technical team who loves to come out of the back. They got to put the ball down, even though the field is still a little bit uh, soft. You can tell the ball's staying a little bit, skipping from the wet grass, but they got to establish the, uh, the system of play coming out of the back. Atlanta building. Now from the left side, trying to get a service in. This one, pretty good air under it. Headed out, though, and cleared by Tampa Bay. Now shifting back, Lackawacki will send it out for the Rowdies. Atlanta throws it in, and that one is going to be out of bounds, and a goal kick coming up for Fitzgerald. So the Tampa Bay Rowdies with wins over North Carolina, Bethlehem, Ottawa, Real, and Toronto. Start of a three-game homestand and he just got the feeling for coach Neil Collins and the guys that this is where you really start to play your best soccer and separate look at the team comparison there the goals goals conceded shots on target as well both teams have played 11 games we have and let's not forget that it's early for Neil Collins as far as he just took over last week so for him once again this is part of that learning curve for all the players that went from having a teammate now they have a new coach they got to get used to the system of play. He didn't so much change the system as he changed some of the players, kind of shook out the team a little bit. Say, hey, we got to do a better job whether we're playing home or away. That's one of the benefits of having such a, a great leader in Neil Collins. He was doing that as a player, and of course now he gets to do it as a coach. I saw Marcel Schaefer there. There's Scott Donnelly, head coach for Atlanta, had a chance saw our pregame show to get a word with him and I think his his answer when I asked do you think you can come in here and maybe steal one tonight he kind of looked at me like of course we can even though they've only won twice this season this is one of the toughest places to play in the USL yeah you know also he talked about being consistent and you know what I would add to that not only does he have to be consistent but he has to be methodical about their finishing they got to be able to put their chances away and as you mentioned Drew this is one of the toughest of Vanios to play in the U.S. Rowdy's corner kick brought to you by Ashley Home Store. As Marcel Schaefer will set things up. Tampa Bay now will jockey for position their first set piece. Great chance here for the Rowdy Schaefer left foot in swinger. Keep an eye on that man Ivan Bagales far post. Also Tam Tamika going near post. Schaefer gets a good ball. That one's shot inside the box. And Bicycle kicked out by Atlanta. The Rowdies had a clean look that time. Yeah, once again, Graf all by himself, far post. I was talking about the different choices that Schaefer would have. And of course, great delivery. He's got the ability to drive the ball anywhere around that 18. Graf found himself wide open in the second post. It actually looked like a handball, but the player tucked his hand right there. Watch the captain. Ooh. Elbow right there, so there's no extension. And great clearance right there by A.J. Coran. Well, this Atlanta team this season, talk about instability and experimenting. 29 different players have played for this club. Changes every single week. Tough to build much continuity when you're doing that. Well, it's really tough to be consistent when you don't have a consistent starting 11 from coach Scott Donnelly. Rowdy's now with the player down. It's Roseboom who is slow getting up. That is not a good sign for the Rowdies. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. The surface uh, being very wet and slippery. I think he was trying to Stop from making contact in that tackle. He just lost his footing. Oh, got his leg caught up. It was the right leg that sort of buckled on him. And it planted in that surface, Eddie, and did not come out. So Roseboom tries to play through some pain here in the early minutes. Tenth minute. No score. Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Jack Metcalf comes up for Atlanta. Now Atlanta with a run. Kissadu attacking. 
Kisadu lays this one off. Left side. Flemings comes up to take it away. Nice play. Junior Flemings. And this will get the crowd going here at Al Lang. Rowdies with a run. Taken down. Graf that time. Right at the 18. And crowd wanted a foul. Well, I think you're going to find out pretty quick whether Roseman is going to be able to go. Yeah, he's down on his knees saying he couldn't go. He's asking for his sub. And that's one of those injuries, Drew, that you're going to figure out really quick whether you can go or not. If you're not able to put uh, weight, as you see, now they're at Atlanta kicks the ball out of bounds, and yeah, Roseboom is, is really hurt. He got up really gingery. He wasn't able to run it off. Well, last time Lance Roseboom was here on this pitch, he scored a goal in that Pittsburgh game. And Roseboom playing a huge role in the midfield. Became a starter just a few games ago. Former member of the Ottawa Fury. Gets tons of respect from his teammates and if he is gone now the rest of the way in this match Eddie what do the Rowdies lose with Lance Roseman on the bench well you, you lose one of your best uh, defensive sentiments of course that's one of the uh, the best things he brings uh, defensive and now Neil is you know thinking what is he going to do of course trainer checking his ACL PCL and this is you might be forced to uh, to make a, an early sauce so or do you Put another defensive center mid, or you bring somebody going forward a little bit. Definitely is going to have to make a sub if Roseboom is not able to go. Looks like he's staying in, and, and that's a good sign if that's the case. And once again, a different angle right here. Oh. You can tell, yeah, how the his right knee just gets his right foot actually. Got stuck on the ground. Now you can just sense in the body language of Roseman how badly he wants to stay in this match. Well, it'll be great if he can stay in for two things. First of all, that means that he's not hurt really bad. But two, it doesn't force you to make an early sub, not only tactically uh, on the pitch as far as who you bring in, but having to do an early sub. Remember, you only have three, so you want to make sure that you use them when you need them. That will send it down now in a battle. Samuel tried to come away with it for the visitors. Rowdies will clear it. Metcalf to throw it in. Inaugural year playing soccer for this Atlanta club. Had a chance to watch them earlier this season take on the Charlotte Independence where they battled them to a draw up the Matthews Sports Complex. Well, for viewers in Tampa Bay, weekdays starting at 4 at on MOR. It's family fun time featuring Steve Harvey, the Goldbergs, Modern Family, Tampa Bay's number one comedy, The Big Bang Theory. Turn on the laughs and get more with MOR. One of the challenges, Drew, for Atlanta, not only their first year playing in the USL, but you know, we talked about they've had so many different starting 11, so many different uh, people playing this year. So the challenge becomes players are not used to playing with each other, different spots. So for them, how do you establish the system of play? And at what point, what system are you playing? So for them, it's about knowing each other on the field and trying to set up some kind of chemistry as early as possible. Michael Schaefer is there. And the trio. Back and forth now, Nanchoff able to split the defense. Nanchoff trying to get a service in. Atlanta getting airborne. Flemings there to put it back. Playable for his team. Contact and a whistle. The ball belong to Atlanta. That's a good foul by Joe Cole. It's a professional foul. Pretty much 80 yards away from your goal. The Atlanta side was looking to come out with the ball under control. You see the Rowdy sitting back a little bit. They're not high in press. They're not ready to press and, and, and push the lines. They're waiting at the three-quarter mark. Al Lang Stadium in Pittsburgh. In St. Petersburg, Drew Felios, Eddie Rodriguez, Lyndon Blake. Still thinking about those hounds in the last home game here at Tampa Bay with a 2-2 draw. The Rowdy's coming off a win on the road at Toronto.
Atlanta being patient, just connecting the dots. You can see they have no really type of urgency going forward. Carranza tied up that time with Nanchoff. So Jose Carranza, former North Carolina FC, star only 19 years old, active, and now a free kick coming up. Carranza has had a pretty good year, though. He's showing signs of great physical presence on the right. Plays that right winger. Right foot in swinger into the box. Carranza puts this one inside the 18. The header there. The tap inside the box. Rose Boom's going to try and clear it. Close call for Tampa Bay. Rose Boom again. Tied up. Yosef Samuel also in the vicinity. Drew, I talked about it during the pregame show, the importance of set pieces. Carranza drives the ball to the far post. Great little flick coming in. And Fitzgerald with a great save right there. Boom. Roseboom gets foul inside the six. This is something, Drew, that the Rowdies have to pay attention because Atlanta will be happy with just going forward at the attack. Set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks. They're able to put one in the back of the net. They're going to sit back a little bit. So you got to make sure you're not giving anything free outside the 18 on set pieces. Rowdies avoid danger in the 16th minute. And now Marshall Schaefer goes to work again. Schaefer shifts it in. Nanchoff back to Schaefer. Schaefer, another service on the way. Atlanta sends it back out. Hunter Gorski. Could not collect it. Now Gorski attacking. Nice touch by Flemings. But Gorski had too many defenders around him in Atlanta. Well, clear it. Yeah, great idea by Manchev looking for the one two with Flemings, who's done a pretty good job checking to the ball, posting up. But earlier you saw the ability of Schaefer to deliver that ball to the far post. Rowdies with a chance to attack again. Flemings trying to get physical with him early in this match. As Fitzgerald comes way out again. And Roseboom does not look like he is moving very well in the midfield right now for Tampa Bay. I'll tell you what, right now, if you're Coach Collins, you may want to think about making a sub. No, absolutely. He actually just uh, made the sign to Neil Collins that he needed a sub. And you can tell there's still two Rowdy players warming up in the corner. I think now it's just a matter of time. And as you mentioned, the mobility is not there. A lot of the times, you as a player, you want to stay in the game, but you know your lateral movement's not there. And all you're doing is putting not only yourself in jeopardy, but also your team. Agalice sends it back to Fitzgerald. Now this ball will belong to Tampa Bay just outside the center circle as Roseman continues to have issues right now on a knee. Yeah, you can tell he just, uh, he stayed down and he's making the sub signal. Of course, you, you give him credit for trying to stay on and, and hang on, but uh, you can tell there's definitely some serious discomfort. And more than that, Drew, he's not able to just recover on the defensive runs. He's a defensive center mid, so right in the middle of the pitch, he's got to do a lot of running, uh, a lot of the, the, the tackles that you don't see. You see the respect that Roseman gets not only from his teammates but also from the opposition as Martin Vingard gets set to check in. And this rowdy substitute brought to you by KPOC Marketing as Lance Roseman exits in the 19th minute. Yeah, and it's unfortunate for Roseman because he's been having, uh, you know, pretty good, uh, actually, a couple of games ever since he broke into the starting lineup. A couple of great games, so it's uh, unfortunate to see him leave because of an injury. We wish him a, a quick recovery. Hopefully, it's just a sprain. So, Vingard with those nine caps with the Danish national team, third year with the Rowdies, going to get an opportunity here to contribute. So, now the question is do you put Vingard 
on an even trade as a defensive center mid, or do you switch? You got Joe Cole on the right. Vingard can sit in the hole right there. And you have on the left, Schaefer, of course. He's been delivering those great balls into the box. Lakowiecki now sends it right back to Nanchoff. Nanchoff wearing a big smile at training yesterday as he faced the media after scoring first goal on the season. Graf went down awkwardly that time, and he is still on the surface. There was definitely contact. He got uh, hit from behind. You can tell in that part of the field, Drew, how the grass is still really wet. You can tell by the footprints right there how much more that grass is lifting after tackles. That's when you see both teams putting the ball in the air. They'd rather not lose the ball and try to come with the ball under control. Jack Metcalf, former Clemson star, throw it in. Rowdy's come away with it. Lakowicki in a crowd. And Lakowicki goes down. So Atlanta being very physical. And that field is taking a beating here in the first 25 minutes. Yeah, but Atlanta has to be careful though. Those fouls around there, you don't want to give the uh, you don't want to give up too many because you have Schaefer on the left, Joe Cole, who can deliver great balls. And remember, this is exactly the way the Rowdies score last weekend against Toronto. Marcel Schaefer once again with the set piece. Look for Magales, far post. Nice curl on this one. Set up the header, and that one is going to head over the goal. Well, Rowdies fans, your next chance to catch Joe Cole, Georgie Ristoff, and all the Tampa Bay Rowdies on this TV will be Saturday, June 9th, versus Nashville SC. Game time, 7.30, pregame at 7, right here on this TV, Tampa Bay. Still scoreless. 22nd minute. Nice crowd on hand tonight here at Allen Stadium. And have one injury for Tampa Bay. Lance Roseboom headed out. And he was replaced by Martin Vingard. Not any offensive opportunities so far for the home team. Marcel Schaefer trying to change that. Manchoff going down. And now Flemings on the right side. Let's try to get it to Cole. Atlanta able to get in front of it. Will Crane playing along that back line. Twenty-two minutes through, and the Raiders are still trying to get a clear chance going forward. And now this one is going to sail out of bounds. Well, you can catch the Blake down. We get a player's perspective of all action across the USL every Wednesday as the Tampa Bay Rowdies Jack Blake hosts the Blake down on the USL YouTube channel. The Blake down has been a big hit. You'll get a chance to see it halftime here as well. Jack Blake is becoming an instant TV star. Metcalf goes down. Schaefer just kind of looks at him and says come on. <laughs> A little bit of smile right back at him. A great tackle. Joe Cole trying to anticipate. Atlanta now slowly attacking Chris Gosselin. Over Shannon works from the center circle, trying to slide a pass in. And this one out to Metcalf. Atlanta, average goal scorer this year, only 20 years old. Rowdies have a huge experience factor coming into this match tonight. Yeah, definitely a young team. Definitely a team that likes to promote players, and of course they're trying to get. Players to go to the next level. 
Kraft gets called for the foul. Only restart. Gonshaw putting some pressure. Now it's Goslin. 20 on 20 as Vingard takes him down, and that's going to be a yellow issue to Martin Vingard. So Vingard comes in off the bench and is disciplined here on the 25th. Yeah, Vingard got their chest a little bit too late. There was uh, much intention to hurt the player, but see, he's laid from behind, and anytime you make contact with both legs right there, and that scissor action, the referee doing a good job staying close to the play. And yeah, you're not going to get away from that, especially when you come from behind when the player's not able to protect himself. So, Vengard issued the yellow card. Now, AJ Cochran. Puts one in the air for Atlanta. Candewary gets his foot on it for Tampa Bay. And how about Tam, who's inserted the starting lineup against Toronto, made a big difference. And Coach Neil Collins has tremendous confidence on what McCandewary is still capable of here late in his career. This ball is sent up. And it's not only Tam, you talk about Ivan Magalest. Metcalf. Sends it out. Shannon trying to get a clear path and the shot. Let's see, does the flag go up at will? Offsides right, called sides. on Atlanta. Kisidu doesn't think so. It's a great job by Kisidu, though, because that's a very difficult ball to, to finish. You're going to see here on the replay, he's at least three steps in front of uh, the two center backs. One being Ivan Magales and Tim Makandi Warrior on the other side. See if you can see from this angle. He's at least three to four yards in front. So now Fleming's <laughs> calls not going the rowdy's ways right now. It's Fleming's a little bit upset. Atlanta was playing really physical in the opening 20. Rowdy's trying to do the same, but Fisher's not having it here. Now you see in the last ball the Joko hat how the ball now is not rolling true anymore. A lot of bouncing right there. It's not conducive to play the ball on the ground. Kissadu, Lauren Kissadu, approaching the 18. A little bit of space to work with. Sends it back. And now Shannon shifts the point of attack. Goslin does the same. Atlanta working from the left, possessing here. Samuel in the 28th minute. Samuel shakes one defender, tries to get through another, and it's deflected by Gorski. Rowdy's a little bit frustrated, not able to possess consistently in this match so far. Yeah, that pretty much has been the story for them. They can't get that consistency that they normally get, especially here at home. Trying to get five and six touches on the ball by different players. Normally they like to keep the ball out of the back and make some Diagonal run, some crosses, and today they just haven't been able to, to keep the one-twos on the ground. Of course, we talked about how difficult the surface is on the Atlanta side. Now it's Cole. Rather, that was Vingard coming out of there. He'll be sent down to Christensen. Kowecki, and another call going to go against Tampa Bay. Anchoff frustrated this time. Card's going to be issued here. Slow getting up is Caranza. I think it was Nanchoff and Vingard. And Vingard's got to be careful because he's got a yellow card already. Nanchoff having a little discussion. Michael Nanchoff had the USL goal of the week last week, his only goal this year. North Royalton, Ohio, six goals last season. And his last stop. And now Atlanta can attack again. Caranza, 1v1. Nicely done. Graf goes down again. Walken spending a lot of time on the ground. And you tell 
Graf having a, a chat with the ref saying, hey, that's the second one. And believe me, not only does he want the count for the fouls, but eventually he'd like to see a yellow. Well, the USL's official Twitter feed keeps you up to date with news, live game updates, and highlights from around the league 24 7. Follow at USL on Twitter. USL on Twitter. Rowdy's on Twitter as well. Chance to follow them, get all the news and information from the team throughout the week. Max Lekowicki, former Real star, suiting up again tonight with Tampa Bay. Crowd a little bit sedated so far here in L.A. Waiting for that first big time moment for the Rowdies. Caranza with some time to attack from the right. Will lay this one to the center. Kisadu, most dangerous player on the field. Now it's Shannon trying to get it back to Kisadu. And this is going to be cleaned up by Fitzgerald. Here Fitzgerald played six years with the Carolina Railhawks. He's got solid experience when he was inserted in the lineup a couple weeks ago. It almost felt like he was sort of a rookie because we've never really seen him play much before. But you can just see the way he commands attention and respect. He knows what he is doing out there. Well, especially the way he commands that respect in that area. You talk about only, you know, the, the box, the 18. And yeah, you talk about a player with a lot of experience, not with the Rowdies, but of course, Played with the Railhawks in, in North Carolina. He's played with a couple of different teams. Taken away. That's the play that this crowd wants to see for the Rowdies to get back into this match. Send it down now to Schaefer. Marcel Schaefer plays it behind Alakowicki. And now Tampa Bay can possess. I think this is what is needed. Yeah, this is when you got to keep possession of the ball. They switch a point of attack when it's on. You got to switch it. But if not, you got to keep the ball. Even if that means playing that negative ball, just start again with your fullbacks. Fleming just goes down. And here comes the first card for Atlanta. Card given out to Will Crane here in the 33rd. It's a good spot for the Rowdies, though. You have a couple of choices. Jill Cole on the right, Schaefer on the left. And you saw once again Fleming's checking to the ball. Great turn. He's going to do a one-two with Nanchoff. And there's this contact from behind, and the referee close enough to make a call. So it'll be a set piece coming up for the Rowdies. Nanchoff, Schaefer will be on top of it. Don't forget, Drew, Joe Cole scored the last home game here. On a set piece as well. Opposite side. Ball formed by the visitors. And now Nanchoff. Step back. Schaefer on the ground just to the right. Two set piece by the Rowdies. Ball goes into Joe Cole. He stops it right there so you can get around the wall. Schaefer doesn't quite make the contact they was looking for. Marcel Schaefer had an awesome Saturday last week up in Toronto. I think of all the players on the routers, he is the most important when he is on his game and those services are on point. This team can be at their most dangerous. Wecky now we'll keep it left. Rowdies will attack. Nanchoff. Nanchoff with the left foot. Saved by Christensen. Great turn by Nanchoff. He turned, he spun with the outside of his right foot. Great delivery, too. He's looking for that far post. Paul Christensen, the goalkeeper for, from Atlanta, goes down, collects the ball. Very dangerous service, though, because the grass is very thick in that part of the field. Welcome everyone. Great to have you with us tonight with Eddie Rodriguez and Lyndon Blake down on the field. I'm Drew Felios. Tampa Bay and Atlanta. 
USL action on a Saturday night from Al Lang Stadium. It's been a game full of fouls so far. Very physical, have not had a ton of flow here, but that certainly is going to change as we move deep into the evening. And once again, Jose Carranza getting through. You see the referee having a chat with Vanguard, who's got a yellow already. Well, this is Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. This TV, Tampa Bay. Now for viewers in Tampa Bay, catch Hollywood's greatest stars 24 hours a day. Stars of your Tampa Bay Rowdies as well. Watch every Rowdies home game on this TV, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first 24 hour movie channel and the home of Tampa Bay Rowdies Soccer. 36 minute. So far, no damage done. Here at Fitzgerald holding things down. And the net for Tampa Bay, Paul Christensen on the other side for Atlanta. Coach Neil Collins, they call him Neely. The players have had just rave reviews about their new head coach. Yeah, he's done great. Drew, you can tell that when we watch practice, just the intensity of practice and you know some of the boys that some of the players have shown, you know, they're eager to get to the field. Just you know, kind of a different feeling you get when you come out to watch practice and just you know the intensity, how players are responding, and of course it's got to show them the result. It did last week on the away game. They're not trying to get it done at home here against Atlanta. Ball sails out of bounds. Let's check in down on the field. Linden is standing by. Hey, Linden. Hey, guys. Going off what you were just saying, the team has really been able to apply Neil's ideas in a short amount of time, and he's not too far removed from being a player, so it's not surprising that he brings a lot of passion and energy. Michael Nanchov actually said his energy is contagious, and, well, it's showing on the field. Kissadu lays it off. This is a blast taken from Goslin, and it is far wide left. Yeah. Nearly certainly a player's coach 34 years old and when you look at the Rowdies roster his name is still on it did not officially retire remember it's not out of the stretch of possibility to think that one day he could still be along that Rowdies back line well let's not forget he had started and played every single minute of the season it was a regular starter and then he got the call Let's not forget, Drew, that he's been coaching for a long time as well. He's got a UEFA A license, which is a big deal. So it's not like he wasn't coaching. He got a phone call. He's been coaching. So that's a good transition from such a veteran player. He's used to using that, you know, experience on and off the field as well. Junior Flemings now. The far right side. Flemings. Trying to collect it. Rallies will throw it in on the far side. Ralph's mob in effect tonight here at Al Lake Stadium. Rowdy's trying to send one in. Graf, the ball skipped right by him. Schaefer watches. Graf comes on to try and reclaim it. Here's Kissadu. Been the toughest player to mark in white by far. Goslin in the touch as well. It's Crane and Atlanta will work some clock. Oliver Shannon. Point of attack switch now. Metcalf. Lots of open space there. Caranza will try and attack. Atlanta definitely being patient, Drew. They're switching, they're building, they're keeping the ball, they're maintaining possession, and they're trying to find that penetrating run behind the defense from the Rowdies. It's not there, but they're taking the time. Jose Carranza on the right has done a good job just keeping possession, taking players on, and of course, He's looking for that number 11, Lauren Kisidu, who's just one play away from breaking through. Cole comes up, takes it away. Cole goes down, and that's going to be a foul and a yellow to go with it. And that's a red. That's a second yellow. Will Crane is going to be sent off for Atlanta. The visitors are going to be a man down here in the 40th minute. I keep saying how the players have to be careful, especially if they're sitting on a yellow. And here's the perfect case for that. 
Will Crane was sitting on a yellow earlier in the first 20, and now he goes for his second tackle. The referee does not want to hear it. And just like that, things are going to get complicated from, for the visiting team. And once again, Joe Cole steals the ball, comes from behind. He actually does get the ball, and that's what he's trying to argue. So Will Crane with two yellow cards within 10 minutes, just like that. Atlanta going to have to go a man down here the rest of the way. That was their worst nightmare. It is because now that complicates everything. And if you look at the clock, plenty of time. Five minutes left in this first half. Plenty of time for the Rowdies to settle the ball down and start finding that gap, keeping the ball, switching the point of attack with that numerical advantage. Eddie, you could just sense tackle after tackle throughout the first half. Eventually, he was going to catch up to one of these teams. And for Atlanta, it certainly caught up to them first. And as soon as I realized it was Will Crane who had committed that foul, you know, it came down to whether he was going to get a card or not. As soon as the referee went to his pocket and reached for that yellow, I, that was it. Second yellow, which of course turns into a red. And now Atlanta, for them, it's can you make it to halftime without giving up one? From now on, for them, every minute the, the passes, they'll be happy to get out of here with a tie. Blackwicky throws it in now for the Rowdies. Tries to get a pass through to Schaefer. Marcel Schaefer tries to turn. Difficult situation here for the visiting team. And a team with only two wins this season. And 11 tries. Book in a really tough spot the rest of the way. So Atlanta's probably going to see with a 4 4 1. Just one forward on top and four across. Trying to look for that counter. If you're going to go with that formation, as we see Scott Donnelly, the head coach. He put uh, Kissy Do on top, number 11, the most dynamic player. Or faster player, do you put him on top or do you go with a typical number nine who's going to be able to hold the ball and wait for some runs? Lackwecky for Tampa Bay. Now Marcel Schaefer. Schaefer trying to service one in. Graf getting airborne. Manchoff with the shot. Great deflection by Christensen. Paul Christensen denying that time, and Atlanta escapes again. Corner kick. In any case, Drew for the Rowdies. Pretty easy for the second half. It's actually a throw in. Great cross right here once again. Schaefer, Nunchoff going direct. Not a lot of power. The goalkeeper just does a good job. Just keeping the ball in bounds. And for them, Drew is simple. Just get some numbers forward. Trying to get some numbers in the box. Deliver the balls. Whether Schaefer on the right, Nunchoff, uh, Schaefer on the left rather. Nunchoff on the right. You got to take advantage of that numerical uh, advantage right now that you're playing with a plus one. Blackwecky in the corner now for Tampa Bay. And now he's trying to get a corner kick out of this. Uh, hammered out that time as Blackwecky kind of still being off the physical. See if the Rowdies press here. They trying to stay on top of it. And are we going to have another? Yeah, a red card issued to Marcel Schaefer in the 44th minute. Wow. And that's a straight red. No yellow. Wow. I'd like to see this replay. Unless there was the full intention of Schaefer to make contact. I didn't see anything of, of that sort. You see there's contact, but the fact that, that he didn't have a yellow, I mean, 
That's just a straight red. There's, to me, there's not enough contact for a red. Both players are going to the ball. Yeah, there's contact. He pushes the player and yellow. Yeah, maybe a red. I think he's just trying to even out things. I don't know. Difficult. Schaefer's night is done, and that's a huge blow for Tampa Bay. So approaching halftime, both teams with red cards. Four minutes of extra time here coming up. Eddie, when both teams have been reduced to only 10, how does that affect what is going on down on the pitch? Obviously, a little bit more running for each side, huh? Yeah, a little bit more because of that space, but it really doesn't affect uh, you other than because you're playing straight up numbers, right? I mean, you still have to make up for some of that, uh, you know, but it's even. The fact that you're playing even. It doesn't give anybody the advantage. Formation is still going to say you can pick whatever formation, and whether you go with one forward or two, but uh, the fact that you're playing even. Junior Fleming's now. Michael Nanchoff. Ball got away from him. Caranza coming up with it for Atlanta. Pushing the back that time. Vingard plays on, and now Fleming's trying to go the other way. And so now this game, who's going to get very chippy? Junior Fleming's gets one ahead. First meeting ever between these two teams. And it has been a little chippy here through the first half. Hunter Gorski sends it down the pitch. This one. It's like it's going to roll out and it will throw it in. So Will Crane sent off for Atlanta. Marcel Schaefer with a straight red card for the Rowdies. And Eddie, I'm with you. I certainly think what he did probably deserved a yellow, but a straight red I think was a little much and maybe a get back call. For sending an Atlanta player off. No, absolutely. It's just uh, the fact that there was no previous yellow card drew. Uh, it, it's a little rough for a straight yellow. Straight yellow usually happens for a very bad tackle from behind, or you punch someone, you know, like literally physically punch someone. But but for that, and like I said, there was definitely contact. There's definitely a yellow, if that. But you know, to try to give that a red card to me is just uh, a sign of he was trying to just even out the numbers on the pitch. And Marcel Schaefer did not really argue his case like he probably thought he would. So maybe that told us a little something else about that play. Here's another shot. Fitzgerald able to deny it. Oliver Shannon with the attempt for Atlanta. Yeah, but the thing about arguing after the ref, after you got a card, Drew, you know, I've never seen a red card overrule. They never take him back, so you're really wasting your time. Whether it was good or not, for you to argue with the ref is not going to get you anything. Yeah, good point. You never argued with the ref back in your day either, never. did you? No, never. absolutely not. Junior Flemings. And Tampa Bay trying to get one more attempt here before halftime. Ranch off. Ahead to Lakowecki. Flemings pass intercepted. Graf trying to run it down. And another foul. That was not a foul. Official right there on top of it. But and see, that's the difference. That's not a foul. That's a challenge, meaning that Graf is charging for the ball. Yeah, he makes contact, but it's a shoulder to shoulder contact. Of course, is valid in soccer. Samuel sends it out. Atlanta trying to keep possession here. First half winding down. This will be their final attempt. Goslin. And the whistle blows, and that is going to do it. The first 45 and change is in the books. And we head to the locker room scoreless.
Tampa Bay and Atlanta here on this TV Tampa Bay. Let's send it down to Lyndon who is with Scott Donnelly. Coach a very physical first half now it's going to be 10 v 10 in the second. How do you change your approach. Uh, we don't we don't change our approach. We have, we have a club style play and we stick to it. Uh, it's part of our players process and uh, we've had the better of the first half so we're happy with it. Thanks coach. All right Lyndon thank you so much Tampa Bay and Atlanta still looking for their first goal through the first 45 on military appreciation night here in downtown St. Pete. Across Florida, we're listening to customers like you, and we're working hard to build the brighter energy future you and your family deserve. That's why we're making smart investments in the grid to improve reliability and prevent outages, to use more clean, renewable energy like solar, and to give you better control over your energy use today and in the years ahead. We're Duke Energy, and we're building a smarter energy future for you. Shh. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, for you. we're throwing out blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home No score, Tampa Bay and Atlanta after one half of play here at Al Lang Stadium on Military Appreciation Night. Rowdies in their first of three straight here at home, starting a little bit slow. Couple red cards, one on either side, and a bit of a bizarre game, Eddie, up to this point. Yeah, we know it's going to be a difficult game. Atlanta, a young team, a team that doesn't have a great record, but those teams are always dangerous. We talked about the field conditions, and it's just that entire half. It's just really wet. Grass is kind of thick, so you can't really play the ball on the ground. It's kind of a, it's kind of a weird game. All right, let's take a look at the highlights after one half of action. The Rowdies trying to attack first. Marcel Schaefer puts one in the air and getting a good foot on it that time was Graf, but too much traffic inside the box and Christensen able to get out clean. Yeah, it's a great ball to the far post. In swinger, Graf all by himself, and the captain from Atlanta just standing on the line makes good contact to clear the ball. And Atlanta had some pretty good opportunities as well. Akira Fitzgerald put on notice and saw Lance Roseboom tied up. Roseboom had a tough go of it. That shot was denied and Rowdy's able to keep the visitors off the scoreboard and then Joe Cole attacking. He goes down and a big red card issued here. Yeah, Joe Cole goes down and the referee gets the second yellow on his left hand. Looks up, straight red, actually uh, two yellows, the first red for Atlanta. Christensen, big save again. Rowdy's unable to really square one up. Manchoff, a factor, and then this one really hurts as Marcel Schaefer gets a straight red. Yeah, Schaefer makes contact from behind, and the referee close enough once again. Pulls a straight red, no yellow, and that's how both teams are sitting with 10 players. First half stats brought to you by Technia Logistics. What numbers really stand out to you here? Well, pretty close, other than the 57% on possession for Atlanta, a team that we thought they might just come here and sit back, wait for a set piece. They've done none of that. They're looking to go forward, and they're playing the Rowdies straight up. So Tampa Bay and Atlanta playing to a scoreless first half. 
Should heat up, though, in the second half as the Rowdies hope to lead this home stand off with a win. Back with more in a moment. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love. Like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo. Or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. In the Tampa Bay area, the weather can change in an instant. Especially during storm season, it pays to stay on top of it. That's what makes the free TVO weather app so indispensable. You can track approaching storms with animated radar that zooms to your location. And you can click on the future radar button to see where the weather is heading. Don't get caught in the rain. Download TVO weather today. Go to tvo.com slash weather to get started. Our next home game broadcast will be Saturday, June 9th, as the Rowdies host Nashville SC. The broadcast kicks off at 7, with the match set for 7.30 here at Al Lang Stadium. Nashville forward Brandon Allen is someone to watch in the match. The Rowdies saw Allen in their second match of the season while he was still playing for Bethlehem Steel. Allen's first goal with Nashville this week against Pittsburgh ended the Hounds' undefeated season. The Rowdies will also face off with former Rowdy Matt Pickens, who has an impressive six clean sheets this season. That's tied for most in the league. Be sure to tune in to This TV Tampa Bay Saturday, June 9th, as the Rowdies host Nashville SC. Now, here's Drew Felios with USL News and Notes. All right, Lyndon, thank you so much. Tampa Bay Rowdies in seventh place in the Eastern Conference. That's why three points tonight would go a long way. Cincinnati. Still up top, Louisville City right behind, and congratulations to Cincinnati getting the MLS nod earlier this week. Let's take a look at the scores now around the league. Cincinnati gets a big win over New York Red Bulls 2. North Carolina FC 1-0. They win over Bethlehem. Ottawa and Charlotte, that match tied scoreless in the second half. Richmond kickers, a goal better than Pittsburgh, also in the second half. Nashville, SC, and Penn scoreless. That Pittsburgh game will be keeping an eye on. Well, news around the league. How about Real Monarchs' Chandler Hoffman, third player in modern USL history to get 50 regular season goals. He's the fastest, though, to reach that mark. Real leading all USL teams with 28 points, continuing to sizzle. And then how about Michael Nanchoff? That goal last week against Toronto was the fans' choice for USL Goal of the Week. Lots to follow throughout the USL and lots to watch. It is time now for The Blake Down, brought to you by Jack Blake. Welcome to another episode of The Blake Down. This week I've handpicked some of my favorite plays from the week. I hope you guys enjoy it. Back across to lose Iwolo, still loose, and high! This play from Awolo starts here. You know, he wins the header, and that allows his striker to go through on goal. The commitment to win the header and then follow it through with the run and the support as well, because he, he could just stop. He could stop his run and expect the striker to score, but he follows it through. He doesn't take the best of first touches when it comes back to him, but he has the composure to take another touch and relax. So cheeky double nutmeg to finish it off. 
there. Finds Perez. Perez with the back heel. It's there. And a goal! Joaquin Rivas! This play is more about the assist. When he picks it up, it's very difficult because he has two defenders on him. He uses his awareness. His spatial awareness is fantastic. He tries to stay in the box as long as possible. And then the support run from Rivas is also tremendous. It looks an easy skill, but it, it's not. It's very difficult. And again, Rivas's finish on the weaker foot into the far corner. Again, it's a, it's a brilliant play. Combine well with others. We saw him a few weeks ago with Fresno. Oh, this is dangerous opportunity here. Strike, and we are equal. This has to be one of my favorite plays from the week. When Lopez gets the better of his defender here, he sees the keeper coming out. His first touch actually takes him on a tight angle. And when you see this frame here, he knows he's got three defenders rushing back to goal. So that when he takes his strike, he knows that he has to put pace on it. Now, to put pace on it from that angle is a very difficult technique. I don't think if, if he had that moment again, he could do it any better. You know, it's fantastic finish, perfect, with three defenders running back to goal. It has to be my favorite play of the week. Mendez, good ball. Here's Zubak looking for number three, and he scores! The connected movement from Ethan Zubak and his fellow strike partner um, here is fantastic. You know, he comes to the to feet and he drags the defender with him. And then he uses his agility and his speed to get past the defender with just a simple movement, a simple step. Again, to have that partnership with your striker is something that's very strong and it will hold him in good stead for the season. There's a reason why he's player of the week. Out of his four goals that he scored, that was my favorite, purely because of the movement and the tactical awareness from both of them. When I saw Alex Mendez get the ball from an entry pass, I just knew I had to spin off. And when the ball came right to my feet on top of the box, I just decided to go for it and finish it. I hope you've all enjoyed this week's episode of The Blake Down. I look forward to seeing you next week. Jennifer Davis was the last person you'd expect to have a heart attack. But despite appearances, she had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection of the left anterior descending artery. But after being rushed to Baycare's St. Anthony's Hospital cath lab, doctors inserted two stents which opened her artery. And thank heaven this extremely rare attack was treated at an extremely rare hospital. Second half about to begin. Gorgeous night at Outlang Stadium in downtown St. Pete. Tampa Bay Rowdies trying to add to their 16 points and stay over 500 as well. Atlanta playing pretty good soccer after the first half. Very physical, not giving up a lot. And let's see what changes are made for the Rowdies in the second session. Keep in mind, Georgie Ristoff has not entered the game so far for Tampa Bay. Leo Fernandez has also been on the bench. So you're talking about some big time firepower that has not entered just yet. All right, let's sit down to Lyndon, who is with Neil Collins. Neil, you're down to 10 guys for the first time this season. Luckily, it's again against 10 more guys. How does this change your approach for the second half? Um, the fact that it's 10 v 10, you know, it's, it's the same. It's the same in terms of numbers, but the game will change. It will be stretched, it will be open, and we just hope that we can get the the goal on the, on the counter attack. It's been a very physical game. How are you going to get the Rowdies back in their flow? I trust the boys. I trust the boys. They're disappointed 
with some aspects of the first half. But the game's here are 90 minutes. We always come on strong second half, and I trust that we will tonight. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, Coach Collins with tons of confidence in his team, and this is the time when the Rowdies really start to shine here at home. But Atlanta right now, a confident group, and it's going to be a real interesting second half. Yeah, you're right, Drew. This is when the experience comes into play, the likes of Joe Cole and some of the most experienced players. Uh, and you're right. This Doesn't change too much as far as you have one player to cover one player. Other than that, you got to adjust to the space. You got to adjust to the time a little bit, and uh, you got to figure out a way to score a goal here. You're playing at home, and you're going to go after those three points. Rowdies have not lost here at home since April 22nd, 2017. That's a long time. 17 home matches without a loss. There's Jose Hernandez. Hernandez will start. The second half for Atlanta and John Gallagher will head to the bench for the visitors. So Gallagher, their lead goal scorer with five goals on the year, is on the bench the rest of the way. Underway here in half number two. Great to have you with us. Drew Felios, Eddie Rodriguez, Lyndon Blake. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Humid night here at Al Lang. Here you see the sub. Is for Gallagher. Yeah, hey. Rowdy, such a presence on social media. Want to get exclusive video content and photography from across the USL? Make sure to follow the league's official Instagram account at USL Soccer. And at USL Soccer on Instagram. For all the latest great photography around the league. Graph chasing and Atlanta possessing here in the opening match. And you want to make sure you don't get cut off chasing Drew with only 10 players. Every bit uh, this full of uh, you know 110 by at least 80 yards wide. With those dimensions, you want to make sure you sit back a little bit, especially the, the ground being wet. Well, if you're just joining us, you've missed some pretty interesting. Red cards have been handed out on both sides for Atlanta. It was two yellows equaling that red for the Rowdies straight red to Marcel Schaefer in the 44th minute. That was a high kick right there. Graf nearly took one right in the chops but kept on playing. Flemings trying to get it to him. Graf can he collect the top the 18 Had it taken away by Kendall Muller. Graf trying to bring the ball down the top of the 18 and he's got to be careful though that little bit of push at the end right after he made contact. The referee just showed us. You see Flemings. Junior Flemings always dangerous. Graf in the vicinity. This one's going to be sent out, and the Rowdies will throw it in on the far side. That's the type of ball you want to play Flemings through. You want to make sure you play the ball into space. He's got the ability to get behind defenders. He's got the pace. And we know he can go one on one. We saw it last week in that breakaway. Isolate him with the defenders. Let him go into the corner one on one and make some runs in the box for a tap in. Now it's Lakowicki. Nanchoff. Nanchoff. The shift his positioning. It's and this ball whistled off sides. Off sides. Just when he got the ball in the corner. You can hear the Rowdies faithful. You see all the kids playing right on top of the hail, the Rowdies heel. This is the type of game, Drew, that is setting up perfectly for them to come back at the end. You know, it's one of the it's one of those games where you gotta show character. They went on the road, they won. You're back here playing at home. This is when you gotta show what you're made of. You had a great week with Neil Collins at the Homie's second week. The team was pretty pumped yesterday when you and I came to practice. They're eager to get on the pitch, and this is when you gotta show it. Atlanta goes with the long ball, no damage done. Fitzgerald has it at his feet now for Tampa Bay. Rowdy's coming off that 4-2 win over Toronto. They're unbeaten with their new head coach, Neil Collins, trying to stay that way here tonight. Fitzgerald with a goal kick.
Joe Cole. And now Tampa Bay with Hanchoff. Interesting to see how the Rowdies adjust without Marcel Schaefer, their top setup guy. Their master of crosses and services. Now that's a great point you bring up, Drew. You see a foul here. Not only did you lose a player, but you lost your best deliverer, right? He's great with his left foot, uh, services on free kicks, set pieces, and of course, free kicks outside the box without great left foot. Joe Cole just behind the Barbasol. Now Anchoff will get on top of it. There you see the path to the goal. This is the situation where guys like Joe Cole are so dangerous. Cole will have it here, and the official's going to blow it dead. Yep, the ball, as you can see, the referee saying, hey, when I whistle. So they'll have another go at it. Referees have not had a good week in all sports, especially <laughs> the NBA Finals. How about that game the other night? Especially not in basketball. Nanchoff trying to send it in. And there's Tam McCandleweary fighting for Tampa Bay. Caranza right there with him. Tam approaching the 18, getting it deep. McCandleweary, nice run that time. And collided with the defender. Should be a foul and no cards and a little bit of a sell job by Atlanta. Yeah, you can tell there's no intention by Tam to make contact. He's actually trying to dribble. He's not a right-footed player, so he loses control of the ball. As you see, Tam trying to go to the inside, and that's just the momentum that took him inside. And the referee once again close enough, so he's telling Molly, I don't think so, just get up. <laughs> you heard that too, right? Yes. That kind of looked like that LeBron James uh, <laughs> charge that he tried to take the other night that was overruled. 52nd minute now. And here comes Atlanta Carranza. Goslin. Goslin now will attack. Homegrown player for Atlanta. Somebody they really like in their system. Kisadu was asking for it. Instead, goes left to Hernandez. Hernandez gets it to the star player. Kisadu takes it. And he'll send it way out to the right. Yeah, that's dangerous. As soon as you got the ball, you see Tam stepping up. Gorski. He's saying, I need it quicker. I need it quicker. And that's exactly what he wants because the more time he gets on the ball, what are you saying? When he gets the ball in the middle, the more time you give him to bring the ball down, he's going to have time to look up and try to put the ball somewhere around the goalkeeper. Send this one down. Flemings. Junior Flemings taken down. And no foul as of yet. Oh, well, that could have been a, a yellow card if you talk about contact. There's not only contact, but you can tell his left foot gets tangled with Flemings. Left foot right here. Watch the play after Flemings loses the ball. See that tackle? See his left foot right there? Oh, so sure. Flemings goes down. That could have very well be a yellow. The, the linesman close enough. So it will be a set piece for Tampa Bay. Fleming shakes it off. And now goes head to head. This is where Marcel Schaefer is so instrumental. Instead, it's Nanchoff this time. The header set up. And Magalais could not do anything with it. For the Rowdies. Yeah, he got a little bit too much under the ball. That ball has to be driven when Ivan Magalhães gets up. He can make contact at the highest point. Instead, by the time Magalhães got up, the ball was floating a little bit, which gives the defender an advantage just to clear the ball out of the back. And that's why Drew, somebody like Schaefer, is so important because he's got the pace, the quality to drive the ball anywhere he wants to put the ball. We've seen him just make contact, play the ball far post, goes for an easy tap in. That's the case with uh, the fourth goal last week against Toronto. Can 
find a Bolin. Cochran as well. Atlanta intent on possessing tonight. Hernandez sends it back. This is Kisadu. Kisadu touches. Goslin straight on shot. That one deflected. And now Fleming. This is what he does best. So quick coming out for Tampa Bay. Can he get a shot on goal? Not able to sidestep the defender. As you saw Cochran coming. Had a lot of time to sort of make an adjustment that he couldn't do it. Yeah, that close. All you want to do is wait for the defender to come in. He just toe poke the ball, jump over him, and get around him. You have to be clever. You have to judge that distance. That's exactly what the defender was doing. Just waiting for him and stole the ball right at the last minute. Well, for viewers in Tampa Bay, weekday starting at 4 on MOR. It's family fun featuring Steve Harvey, the Goldbergs, Modern Family, and Tampa Bay's number one comedy, Big Bang Theory. Turn on the laughs and get more with MOR. Here's Chris Goslin sending back to Kisadu. Kisadu touches. And now Shannon. This is starting to pick up here on the pitch. And now Lang. Atlanta in white. Tampa Bay in the green and gold. It's been a very physical, winded out game so far. Atlanta trying to get through a Rowdy's defense. Playing tough that time. Vingard is starting to really play well for the home team. Hernandez touch to Kisadu. Lots of possession. Clock being chewed up by this Atlanta attack. And Eddie, a couple shout outs you want to give tonight. That's right, Drew. Probably one of the best ambassadors of the game. Somebody who's celebrating their birthday tonight with his wife Mona and daughter Priscilla. Pete Peterson of the Atlanta area, big time Rowdy's supporter, a big time fan. Who, by the way, has coached different teams in the USL, Jacksonville uh, Cyclones, the Rally Capital Express, what used to be the A League, now USL. Great coach now, He's coaching for Clayton State in the Atlanta area, coaching some of this new talent. You see a lot of these players who are playing out for the Atlanta MLS franchise are coming from those academies, from those coaches who have spent their entire life promoting the beautiful sport of soccer. Shout out to Pete Peterson. And sub coming in for Atlanta. Devin Sandoval will enter. Looks like Samuel is going to head out of the game for Atlanta. So Sandoval in, Samuel out. Von Sandoval entering the Albuquerque, New Mexico native, won a NASL title last year with the San Francisco Deltas, a team that won a championship and franchise immediately folded after that. Several players flocking to the USL, and they're making a difference around the league for sure. Yeah, a lot of those players from the Deltas, and they actually beat Miami, the best team in the regular season in the NASL. That now a lot of their players are playing in the USL. We have Jack Blake who played for the Jacksonville Armada last year. Well, Tampa Bay has made one substitution tonight. Atlanta has just made their second. So keep an eye on that. Lance Roseboom requiring the early sub in the early minutes. And let's see as this game kind of goes into the 60th and 70th minutes how much fatigue will be a factor we were on the field in the pregame I mean it's in the low 80s but it felt like it was 90 degrees it's just very sticky out well, there tonight for sure and as you know Drew is that humidity that gets you you know you're spending a lot of uh, not only calories but just sweating a lot you're losing a lot of fluids and as you know hydration sets in once you're dehydrating you start cramping up there's nothing you can do to regress that Shannon turning now for Atlanta. Keep in mind, still playing 10 on 10 here the rest of the way. Goslin, a couple rowdies staring him down. Tampa Bay, very organized defensively. Another player goes down. It will belong to the rowdies. There's Nanchoff. That down quickly. 
Well, keep up to date with all the best social media from around the league as Kelsey Steele hosts Off the Post every Friday through the league's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds. Kelsey Steele doing a great job with Off the Post every Friday through the league's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds. Here Fitzgerald, clean sheet so far for the good guys. Gorski and Flemings able to win it for Tampa Bay. Nagalice, other side of the field now. This is Lakowiecki. Manchoff really settling things with Joe Cole. Yeah, much better by the route. He's switching the point of attack and staying calm. You see how the, how the ball just bounced in front of uh, Ivan Magales as he was trying to come out of the back. But just keeping possession of the ball, Drew, and taking the time building from behind. Make sure you have the time, make sure you have the ball. And now once the forward's on, you can play Graffis by himself, playing the ball underneath that center back as he's checking to the ball, play those balls either behind the defense or in between two center backs. That's how you can do some damage. Right now, shots on goal. Rowdies have five of them. Atlanta with six. So the visitors won better up to this point. Joe Cole, this is where he's at his most dangerous. Turns and feeds. Now the other side. Hunter Gorski trying to get one in. Graf didn't have a chance. Cole goes airborne. And Tampa Bay keeps possession. 61st minute. Have not had a goal yet. Now McCanda Weary trying to get through the defense. Flemings to Gorski. Nice tempo built up by the Rowdies, probably their best of the match. Trying to slide one to Flemings here. Can he keep it alive? Puts one in the air. Nanchoff comes over and has help in the form of Lakowiecki, who takes the blast, and it sails into the seats. Great job by Flemings just getting to that ball. Not the best angle. Drives the ball to the far post, and Lakowiecki just trying his luck from out wide. It's okay, though, because when you hit the ball from 18, 20 yards, now you see how they're shaking Atlanta from side to side. This is when you can get those uh, those balls in the middle, Drew, when you can penetrate that from the 18, try to put the ball behind, and that's where you're going to get a clear chance. Keep in mind, the Flemings has been running the entire time. He's making some good runs. You want to isolate him one-on-one -on -one when you can on top of the 18. Use that speed to break away. That last possession, probably the best, the most organized that the Rowdies have had all night long. Flemings trying to get it back. Hernandez not letting that happen. This one will go the other way. So military appreciation night. A profound thank you to all men and women who have served. Watching us tonight and here at the Park Dowling Stadium. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And a team that coming off two straight losses. Coach Neil Collins very confident that Rowdies could get three points tonight, but it's certainly not been easy. This ball up for grabs. Rowdy should come away with it. Graf. That, that right there should be a yellow card. You saw the referee hesitated, went to put the whistle in his mouth, and all of a sudden he pulled it at the end. That should have been a yellow. That happened so fast. Now Goslin trying to turn. Kissadu. Oliver Shannon. And now you see Drew Atlanta trying to do the same thing, trying to keep possession of the ball, taking their time, building out of the back. Carranza. This one heads out. And it should belong to Tampa Bay. Here's a look at that Once last again, play. Yeah, see that cleats up by that number three, the defender from, uh, you know, AJ out of the back. Anytime you show your cleats like that, Drew, what we call cleats up, you have the ability to hurt someone. So the referee saw that. He was close enough. Once your foot leaves the ground and you're looking to make contact, that should be at least a yellow, especially when you're coming from behind. That's definitely a yellow. It's 
game has been played at a pretty slow pace up to this point. Not as many opportunities for both teams as we thought coming in. Atlanta has really been able to slow down the tempo. That's one thing that they have done really well here. As McCann to Weary. will send it the length for the Rowdies. Graf. Can't get close to it. Gorski plays it over. And now it's Vingard. He was carded as soon as he entered the match in the first half. He's played clean since. Cole will send it back, and the Rowdies will possess. And McCann to Weary started the season with us here in the booth. Nice pass into Junior Flemings. Flemings just approaches that back line, and again, just could not keep possession. Looks like we're going to have a Tampa Bay Rowdy substitute here coming up, and it's going to be Alex Morell, the Lakeland product, former University of North Florida Chicago Fire star, and he will replace Jakin Graf. And Rowdy substitutes tonight are brought to you by K Pock Marketing. Morell in for Graf. Yeah, the second sub for the Rowdies. And I like this sub because you're bringing the youngster, Alex Morell, who we've seen him play. He's got plenty of pace. He's got the ability to run and get behind defenders. You put him and Flemings, Flemings on top, that's a dynamic pair right there. And especially when you bring him in late in the second half, trying to spark that offense through, trying to get something going offensively for the home team. Two subs now for each team. 67th minute. Goslin continuing to be a factor. And the midfield for Atlanta. Where's number 20? You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Rowdy's hosting Atlanta tonight with Eddie Rodriguez and Lyndon Blake. I'm Drew Felios. Lyndon on the field here at Al Lang Stadium. Nice crowd on hand, still waiting for a goal. Great tackle by Joe Call right around, you know, the 20. He comes out and look how compact the entire. The Rowdy's team is they're defending behind the 50 yard line, which is good. Now, tactically and technically, they're just nice and tight in the middle. They're not giving anything behind. They're going to make you work all the way around. And if you're going to get something, you're going to have to earn it. But there's not going to be a lot of space right in front of the 18 group. Gorski. Sends it now far side. Rowdy's looking for some kind of firepower. Cole will try and set things up. Junior Flemings, a little bit quiet tonight. He was red hot coming in with those two goals last week. Goslin now handling. Not a lot of pressure being applied by the Rowdies at this point. Shannon. Off comes up now. Goslin from the center circle. It's Hernandez, and there it is, finally. And it's the youngster off the bench, Alex Morell. Morell trying to get by a defender. Fresh legs, and finally denied. But you got to love the burst of energy. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. Fresh legs coming off the bench. He's got the speed to get behind. Now, that's when you got to have the poise to go one and one, play the ball. As you see, Hernandez down. As our player is down on the field, Jose Hernandez. Let's see if we're going to get a card. I don't believe at this point. Let's take one more look and see where this collision happened. That's just, uh, you know, Morel was challenging for the ball. And Hernandez paying for it at that time. He'll be looked at by the trainers. Well, Rowdies fans, your next chance to catch Joe Cole, Georgie Ristoff, and all the Tampa Bay Rowdies on this TV will be Saturday, June 9th versus Nashville SC. We're back here one week from tonight. Game time, 7.30. Pre-game at 7 right here on this TV, Tampa Bay. And you look there at 
one of the premier facilities in the USL Al Link Stadium. Just a great place to watch soccer. If you've never been here and taken in the Tampa Bay Rowdies experience, Eddie, it is a must do. Such a fun family night out and a great night for the kids, for the wife to get away, be a part of uh, Ralph's mob and watch some top notch soccer. Look at that. Talk about family atmosphere. It's just great to come out to one of the best venues in the U.S. Converted from a baseball stadium to a soccer stadium. And you and I talked about the acoustics when <laughs> when the home team scores here. Just the sound of it is just incredible. Well, which teams are hitting peak performance in the USL? Find out every Monday afternoon when USLsoccer.com power rankings are released to see where your team sits after its most recent results. That's USLsoccer.com and those power rankings released every Monday afternoon. So Hernandez helped off for the moment for Atlanta. So Rowdy's with a temporary advantage. Hernandez though slowly comes back onto the pitch. Sloppy ball handling it gets away and now Flemings with a chance. Junior Flemings has got help. This one is going to wind up in Nanchoff's bread basket. Nanchoff puts it up on top of the goal, and that's another opportunity there. The Rowdies have got to do a little bit more with chances like that. Yeah, those are the ones you got to take care of. I like the fact of the numbers, though. You see, even in the 70th minute, and you have four of the Rowdies players in a full out sprint. As you can see, great job by once again Alex Morrell. Flemings. Could have been a little bit of a better touch, a better ball, but nonetheless, the fact that you're getting there, I like that. Eddie, one thing about Junior Fleming, he's such an explosive player, but sometimes he's like 100 miles an hour all the time. A guy like Joe Cole can switch speeds from 75 down to 45. And that's the difference. You're talking about two different players. Joe Cole being a tremendous technical uh, midfielder, where Fleming's is just one speed, 100%, 100 miles per hour going forward. A lot of the times he doesn't have the little touch like you saw right there. Somebody with a little bit of a better touch would have put that ball right into the space for Alex Morel to finish one time. Instead, the ball just is a little bit too far out of reach. That's the difference. Hernandez now for Atlanta. Kissadu. It's not been much of a factor so far in the second half. Has not possessed it very much for the visitors. A little bit of space to work with. As Carranza sends it back. Goslin will fire one straight up in the air. And Fitzgerald watches it sail above everybody. It's going to be a corner kick coming up for Atlanta. So Rowdies have certainly got to be careful here in the 73rd minute. Kira Fitzgerald, clean sheet so far, is going to keep his defenders close and safe as Vingard will stand right in front of him. Leo Fernandez warming up for the Rowdies. He'll be the next substitute momentarily. The next one and the last one for the Rowdies. But I like that saw, Drew. The fact that you're bringing. Leo Fernandez, a forward, this late in the game, he gives you a little bit of an insight to what Neil Collins is thinking. You know what he's thinking? I won the three points at home. I want to win this game. So he's going to put Leo Fernandez. He's got plenty of pace. Great left-footed player. Send it forward. Now you can play with three forwards. Alex Flemings and Leo Fernandez. AJ Cochran going down, holding his head. Had a collision with Michael Nanchoff. Nanchoff set to come out of the game for Tampa Bay. Saw Flemings was a little shaken up there. And then what happened? Cochran. What happened is he's trying to sell the call again. There's barely any contact. And once again, there's no intention by Nanchoff to make contact with the player. Or to even hurt him for that matter. 
So here is Leo Fernandez. Again, Rowdy substitutes brought to you by K Pock Marketing. As Fernandez trots on to the field, he certainly has that goal scoring ability. He started off the year red hot, but has gone a little bit quiet since. Well, guess what, Drew? Tonight's the night for him. He got about 16 minutes to change things. All he needs is one good chance, one good ball into space. Get Flemings, Alex Morel to make runs going forward. How big of a hero, Drew, would you be if he come off the bench right now, just like he did, and score the game winner? At home. Rowdies are done with subs for the night. Atlanta still has one more time to go to their bench here in the 75th minute. And they will. Send it down. Flemings looked like he was kicked in the face that time. Another high kick, and the official right there to make the call. Yeah, definitely a high kick. And now you can see the referee breaking out the cards. It was so easy to get uh, Schaefer off the field on that red card. Watch this high kick right here. Uh, he actually pulled his leg back out at the end, so there's no intention. Vidgard over to Leo Fernandez. Leo's got that ball handling ability. Just brings magic to the pitch anytime he steps on. And that's exactly what you want Leo to do. Give him the ball, open up the space, let him go at people. Send him out wide from the left. You want some crosses? Here's one sent on right into the hands of Christensen. That ball was crushed. So, Drew, you have Leo Fernandez on the left, Alex Morell on the right, and Fleming's in the middle. Going forward, trying to get a goal here late in this second half. Plenty of time on the clock to do it. Also have to be wary of what this Atlanta team is capable of. Kiss to do. And will it take a mistake here for Atlanta that leads to a Tampa Bay goal? One thing you can say about the visitors, they have not committed the mistakes that we thought they would coming in to this pitch tonight. They're pretty sure footed. That ball just dies in the grass. Very soft field. Vingard able to take it away. And now Fernandez plays it ahead. There's Alex Morel. Morrell trying to get it to Flemings. A little bit too far ahead. Flemings had the inside track, and you saw right at the end, he went around the defender. He could have kept going, and that's what Alex Morrell was trying to do. Play the ball in front of Flemings, who was making that run. Instead, Flemings kind of slowed down and went around. That was the right ball, though. Just a little bit less. Play the ball into space, which is where Fleming has got to be, not where he is right now. Of course, with that speed, you want to send him forward. Here's Kissadu. Keep in mind, Rowdy's playing without their top setup guy, Marcel Schaefer. They have missed his presence. This is Shannon for Atlanta. Kissadu back to Shannon. Look at that line. That sent him in. That great job just shifting side to side. One of those balls, that's the one you want to pinch right there. When you can win it, you see Leo Fernandez, Jill Cole, Morrell. Rowdy's very organized defensively. You have to be patient, Drew. All you got to do is get one clear chance, one good breakaway. So you want to build it up, take your time, build it up, and when it's on. Only concern right now, though, for Rowdy Sven. They just have not possessed it in the second half like we thought coming in. Yeah, but if you think defensively, they're doing a great job in the back. Ivan Megalas in the back is doing a great job. So does Tam. Here's Flemings trying to get him on the fly. Flemings, can he keep running? Looked like he slowed up just a bit that time. 
Yeah, well, that's when you got to go 100%. You cannot slow down because that ball brought the center back wasn't the best ball back to his goalkeeper. Exactly. You saw Paul Christensen came out. Ah. So when that ball gets played behind, you got to go 100 miles per hour. You're Flemish. You got to continue your run. Right now, see every single player by the routers except for Flemings, who's playing the post up number nine forward, is playing behind. Great job defensively, tactically, great job winning the ball out of the back. Alex Morel trying to keep it in. Morel, those fresh legs, forces a Rowdy's possession at midfield. You see, that's exactly right. Alex Morel goes. The rule says when the defender takes a bad touch, that's exactly what that center back, AJ. Conrad did. He took a bad touch, and Alex Morel sprinted forward. Leo Fernandez, where he's so dangerous. Flemings trying to get it right back to him in traffic. Fernandez lost it, but certainly changing the game, affecting it. Doing his job right now at the moment. Ten minutes left, Drew. This is when you want to spend every minute of those last ten minutes in the attacking third. Hunter Gorski. Morrell waiting for it. Here's Joe Cole. Cole slides one to Morrell. Morrell up in the air. Flemings with the header. Fernandez just outside the six. He could just turn around. Rowdy's not done with it. Fernandez lofting one in the air. Morrell touching it back to the cross. Cole waiting off in the distance. He's one you want to keep the pressure on, though. Regroup, get the ball, start again, switch your point of attack, control the ball, and when it's on, go forward. You can see some tired legs on the Atlanta side right now. Rowdy smelling some blood here in the 82nd minute. Here's Fernandez. Left footed shot denied by Christensen. Great job by the Rowdies building out of the back, and that's the reason why Leo Fernandez came in late in this game. He's got fresh legs, a full tank of gas. Watch this great ball right here. Goalkeeper taking care of the near post, but it's a great shot because he goes low on the ground, and he gains a corner kick. Lano will send one more substitute on. Sean Nick Law gets set, and Kissadu, the most lethal player, will exit. And that tells you their strategy. You're taking their best forward. You're putting a defender in. Atlanta just going to sit back. So this Rowdy's corner kick is brought to you by Ashley Homestore. They'll make that sub right now. Like a Rocky, the left fullback by the Rowdies. Great job just going with Leo Fernandez on that one two. They got to the end line. Get numbers in the box. Left footed in swinger. Ball's a little low. Gorski could not foot it. Just slid right off the side of his shoe, and now Tampa Bay will throw it in. Rowdy's with much better pace here in the past three minutes. Well, they've been playing with that sense of urgency in the last, uh, uh, you know, probably 10 minutes. They're trying to go forward, and you want to keep that pressure up. Make sure you keep them in their defensive third. Put that pressure on, and look at the movement on and off the ball by the Rowdy's. Just sense Rowdy's saved something here for the final part of this game on a hot and humid night in St. Pete. Fernandez turning again, laying one off. And this one just got to the six. And it was cleared by Atlanta. Rowdy's will head to the far side. And Leo Fernandez certainly making a difference off the bench. That's one of those tactical changes. That you knew it was going to pay dividends for Neil Collins. He brings a player who's very good technically. Here's a shot from Morrell. Oh, what a blast. Christensen may have been beat that time if that ball could have just gotten below the crossbar. Alex Morrell with a great shot outside the box. He won that shot, Drew, either near post as he was trying to do, just not enough space for the ball to dip. He gets around the defender. And look at that. He's trying to go near post. Just so dangerous because the goalkeeper didn't have enough to get there. Now, if you can curve that ball to the far post, giving you a little more space for the ball to dip. So now possession back to Atlanta after a long sequence for the Rowdies. Jack Metcalf 
will send some, it back. At some point, you got to go get it, Drew. You cannot afford to let Atlanta sit on the ball because they're going to knock it around and just try to kill the time here. Chris Goslin carefully brings it back out. Here in the 85th minute, Oliver Shannon as well. Well, for viewers in Tampa Bay, catch Hollywood's greatest stars 24 hours a day on this TV, Tampa Bay. Plus, catch all the stars of your Tampa Bay Rowdies. Watch every Rowdies home game on this TV, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first 24-hour movie channel in the home of uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies soccer. Thanks, everybody, for watching here tonight. And a reminder, if you're ever away from your television, also can watch on ESPN Plus as well. ESPN Plus and USL partnering. Tampa Bay Rowdies with Junior Flemings trying to create a run. Now Fernandez. Leo Fernandez with a shot. And there's Christensen again diving to make the stop. Paul Christensen might as well just save the game right there for Atlanta. What a save. Once again, Leo Fernandez doing what he does best. Joe Cole goes down. And the Rowdies will have a crack from by 30 out. So the veteran trying to catch up to it. Went down hard that time. You see the respect Joe Cole gathers for Tampa Bay. Oliver Shannon there to help him up. Great ball by Clemens. Leo Fernandez even better. Gets in front, looks up. Wow. What an outstanding save by Christensen. No, because he waited. He waited. He waited and right at the right time. He dove to his right. Because that ball was actually going. That was on frame. Now Joe Cole. Remember last time when he was at home. On a play just like this. Cole found a way to score. Goes a little high with it this time. Header is out of bounds. That save by Paul Christensen in Atlanta. You're right, Eddie, could certainly save the match for this Atlanta team. And I think a candidate for save of the week. That's how good it was. Fernandez had a clean look. Absolutely, because of the time, too. You're talking about the 86 minute, won the game's on the line. Paul Christensen just stood his ground, waited, waited to the very last minute. He dove. That could have really well just been the, the game winner right there. Game saver. Because a lot of the times, true goalkeepers try to dive or try to guess. If you want to try to guess to the inside, the ball goes to the outside. Well, this rowdy streak, as I mentioned earlier in this broadcast, they have not taken a loss here at home since April 22nd, 2017. 17 matches, well over a year. That's how valuable the home field advantage has been. And Eddie, you said it in the pregame with Lyndon. The rowdies take this home pitch personally. This is their territory. They don't surrender goals here easily. They don't surrender games as well. And under their new head coach, Neil Collins, and it looks like that is continuing. Boy, it's that attitude you got to have, Drew. No matter what, you're not going to give up goals. You're not going to give up wins here at home, knowing that if you're not going to score, it's, this should end in a draw. And that's the kind of attitude they have, especially when, when they're playing at home. However, you still want to go for that win you got to figure out a way you got to find a way to to get those three points at home here's jose hernandez attacking from the left trying to send one in rowdy's there to deflect it as this one is off the back of goslin will be a goal kick for fitzgerald you see great timing by tam and that tackle right there just dove right at the right moment gets the ball out you see fitzgerald trying to get going Saying, hurry up, hurry up. We still have three minutes plus stoppage time. Kandawiri down to Flemings. Junior Flemings with a turn. Has some space to work with. Gets a pass through. There's Alex Morell. Morell tries to cross it. Just didn't have much help that time in the form of a green and gold jersey, but Gorski comes over now to throw it in. And that's all it takes. You see what a great ball by Flemings. 
puts Alex Morrell through. Joe Cole on the ball. Gorski. Gorski. Service. Fernandez. Christensen right there on his back. The Rowdy's pushing the lines forward. Ivan. Tam, Joe Cole. And you see how far, how far forward the two centermen are. They're trying to get numbers up. Here's Gorski. Gorski retreating. Now to the sure feet of Joe Cole. Cole just lost it that time. Rare mistake from the veteran. And now Cole is going to be issued a yellow card here in the 90th minute. And that's just a frustration one. It is. He just gave the ball in a bad spot. Once again, that's a professional foul. Rather than give away, you know, the, the player was on a breakaway. He finds a way to stop him. Of course, that cost him a yellow, but he knows this late in the game. It's okay. He just he's not going to make that mistake twice. Player without experience, as you see, three minutes of stoppage time. Plenty of time, Drew, to get one more. Well, you're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Eddie Rodriguez up here in the booth. Lyndon Blake down on the field. Andrew Felios. Tampa Bay Rowdies and Atlanta battling. Had no goals tonight. First time we've seen the Rowdies at home this late in the game without a goal. In 2018. Caranza trying to get one in. That's a good ball. The shot was on. And lucky is Akira Fitzgerald because Devin Sandoval Got a head on it was just a little to the left. Absolutely lucky. Sandoval found that ball, makes contact, and just the necessary contact. She really wasn't expecting it right at the end. See, and actually, Tam got a hold of that. He actually touched the ball. And also, Sandoval found it right inside the six. Rowdy's escape one. Now, Junior Flemings. Flemings being held. You got to call that. And if he's the last player, that should be a red one. He gets a yellow instead. He's counting how many times he let him get away with it. So he finally gets a yellow. Now he's trying to work quickly, but the ball not put into play. Keep in mind, three minutes stoppage time, so time continues to be a factor. And you see the difference. Joe Call plays the ball. That's a freebie like you see in football. If the referee calls it, he can set up again. Now the defense knows he's not going to go short. Now he's going to take a look and see what's open. That's a very smart play by Joe Cole. Just testing the defense. See what they're going to give you. And that right there, Drew, just comes with experience. See if Rowdies can muster another good chance. 93rd minute here at Outlang Stadium. Tampa Bay trying to get their sixth victory of the season. Junior Flemings not able to break loose so far tonight. Joe Cole on top of it. Cole, a little bit of air under this one. It's alive and well. Tampa Bay trying to get to it, but Atlanta does first. Jose Carranza gets rid of the ball. Gorski throws it in quickly. See if Morell can make something happen. Morell and Fernandez have been difference makers off the bench. Unable to score though just yet. Morrell keeping this play alive. Puts it up. There's Joe Cole getting the blast on right off the back of an Atlanta defender. Just too much traffic inside that 18. But you see how much Alex Morrell creates off the dribble. Just when you think he's going down or you think he's going to go out of bounds, gets up, dribbles inside the 18, and lays a perfect ball to Joe Cole. Seconds now so precious. Fernandez trying to get one on point. Morrell watches it sail. Gorski. Just outside the 18. Cole, can he get a blast on? Gorski, final seconds. Inside the box. One shot is on and just over the goal. And that is how we are going to end it. In heartbreaking fashion for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. They had a couple of chances there in the final seconds. If you look at the field, Drew, and see how many players from Atlanta are down because they can't go anymore, that tells you how this game was fought on the pitch. They give it all. They tried everything.
just wasn't meant to be. It was a test of will tonight here in downtown St. Pete. This is the final seconds. Lakowiecki, if he could have just squared that up far post, the Rowdies would have had a 1-0 victory. All right, let's send it down on the field to Lyndon Blake. Coach, your team shut out the Rowdies for the first time since August 20th, 2016. How'd you get it done? Oh, sorry, what was your question? I said that you guys were able to shut out the Rowdies for the first time since August 20th, 2016. It's been a long time. How'd you get it done? Um, I think we, we had a, a better defensive performance than we've had in, in, in recent weeks and um, with this group. And all credit to the players. Um, they're bought in. They're, they're, they're working. And a lot of individual toughness tonight. So proud of them. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck this Thank season. You. All right, Scott Donnelly could not have asked for much more. Atlanta comes in here. They play tough from the start. Ran out of gas in that final 10 minutes. Tampa Bay had several chances. Joe Cole, you thought we were waiting for that masterful moment, those ones that he's so used to pulling out, but just was not in the cards here down the stretch. Yeah, and at the end, you were just waiting for that moment of brilliance by any of the players, and it just did not happen. All right, Lyndon Blake is with Neil Collins. Coach, it was a hard fought battle tonight. What do you take away from the match? Um, the biggest thing I take away is the last 20 minutes. The boys created five or six fantastic chances. Uh, on another night, we'd have put one of them away. The goalie's made two or three fantastic saves. So, look, a lot to improve on. I always knew that was going to be the case. But what no one could fault is uh, the boys trying effort um, to try and put into practice what we're looking for. We didn't see much of it tonight. But there's enough positive signs that we'll, we'll get there. And how did playing 10 versus 10 an entire half affect the match? I think you could see it. It was like sporadic. You know, we had attacks, then they had attacks, or keeping the ball. You know, I think we created the most uh, opportunities, couldn't convert. Look, in my first couple of games, we've had injuries and injuries that we've had to contend with. Red cards tonight. We've not been able to use our full quota of subs because of that. So it's been tough, but, you know, um, a lot to learn from for me and for the team. Thanks, Coach. All right, London, thanks so much. Lance Roseboom trying to shake it off. He was the rowdy that was injured in the first half, and it just was not the same since his departure. So we'll recap a scoreless draw and have much more reaction from down on the field when we come back to Al Lang Stadium. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League. Best tailgate, brisket. No, real football y pollo asado. Poops and wings. Dude, subs. Hot dogs. Chili dog. No, Dodger dog. It's gotta be crawfish. Now you talk burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Hum what? You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day. Race day. Calls for Coke, you know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101.
Welcome to the Tampa Bay Rowdies postgame show. 0-0, the final score. The Rowdies and Atlanta in a dogfight. It was a draw tonight and one where if you're a Rowdies fan, you're a little bit disappointed. Of course, Eddie, anytime you take your home pitch, you want a victory. But credit Atlanta. They, they made this a, 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 a scrap, just a very physical game. And the Rowdies struggled a little bit to adjust. They did, you know, the, and I'm not going to make excuses, but the conditions of the pitch in, in one half, it was extremely difficult, especially the style that the Rowdies played. They wanted to come out and control the ball. It was difficult, but you're right. Atlanta came here with a plan to make it difficult for the Rowdies, and that's exactly what they did. All right, let's take a look at the highlights throughout this match. There was not many of them. Early part, Marcel Schaefer sending one in. You saw Graf get a foot on it, and credit Paul Christensen. Did a great job in goal for the visitors. Yeah, Christensen went near post, but there's another, the captain, right next to the post. On the other side, Jose Carranza with a well-driven ball to the far post. And Fitzgerald with a great save right on the six. Kira Fitzgerald also doing a good job. Clean sheet. That touch right there. That goal written all over it by Kendall Mullen. But Fitzgerald sure-handed from the start. Now Joe Cole goes down right there. And for Atlanta, this would change the complexion because Will Crane, that's his second yellow. He was issued a red, sent off. Rowdies had the clear advantage. And unfortunately, it was only for a few minutes at the end of the first half, and they were not able to capitalize as the game went on. Yeah, this play right here. Marcel Schaefer right there gets a straight red card. So Atlanta playing with 10. Now the Rowdies playing with 10. That meant more running, more ground to cover on this hot and humid night. Tampa Bay with some chances late in the game. Leo Fernandez trying to square one up. Christian's to the diving save. And that was the big news for the Rowdies when he came in. He started knocking the ball around, finding those gaps and spaces in the back. Great crosses by Leo Fernandez. Kira Fitzgerald dodges a bullet there. That was the last good chance for Atlanta. Just off to the left, Fitzgerald was a little flat-footed. Tampa Bay down to their final minutes. And the Rowdies just did not give up, continuing to pepper Christensen with shots. Switching the point of attack, and Eddie, they do everything but get a goal here. They do, and this is the best soccer they had. It was in the last 10 minutes trying to go forward and capitalize. Lakowiecki just cannot put it in. Our final stats look like this. Tampa Bay, they trailed Atlanta by a shot late in the game, but after all the shots, able to get 15 by the time the night is Well, and if you look at the numbers, possession-wise, 62% by the visiting team because they were content with not going forward, keeping the ball in the back. However, the Rowdies, they wanted to go forward, and when they went, they attacked, but they didn't have that much possession of the ball. They are trying to create chances and go to goal. All right, we got much more coming up here from Al Lang Stadium players signing autographs, and hopefully we can get some reaction in just a few minutes. Rowdies in Atlanta, a scoreless draw. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. In the Tampa Bay area, the weather can change in an instant. Especially during storm season, it pays to stay on top of it. That's what makes the free TVO weather app so indispensable. You can track approaching storms with animated radar that zooms to your location. And you can click on the future radar button to see where the weather is headed. Don't get caught in the rain. Download TVO weather today. Go to tbo.com slash weather to get started. Jennifer Davis was the last person you'd expect to have a heart attack. But despite appearances, she had a spontaneous coronary artery dissection of the left anterior descending artery. But after being rushed to Baycare's St. Anthony's Hospital cath lab, doctors inserted two stents which opened her artery. And thank heaven this extremely rare attack was treated at an extremely rare hospital. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, for you. We're Florida Blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you we 
Tampa Bay and Atlanta, scoreless draw. That's the final from Al Lang Stadium as we continue our post-game show. Thanks so much for sticking with us, Drew Felios and Eddie Rodriguez. And I'll tell you what, start of the season, Tam McCandoway was up here in the booth. And, Lyndon, you've been working with him throughout the season in a broadcasting role, but he has got a new defined role here with Neil Collins as the head coach. Yes, he sure does. Tam, describe the physicality that we all saw on the field tonight. Yeah, it was a tough game. They have to give them credit. They, they kept the ball very well in. Um, they pressed us very well at times as two. Um, the, the far end of the field was, was very, um, very uh, soggy, um, so that made it difficult as well. Um, a hot night, and, and um, we, we had to work hard to get a point there. Um, disappointed, but um, we'll take it. You came up big on the defense. You were a big part of it all night long. But how does playing 10 versus 10 affect the way you guys play? Well, obviously, there's um, a little bit more space on the field, um, and I thought they they um, they did very well. And but we worked hard. We showed a lot of character. We didn't quite um, obviously get the goal that we, we wanted, but on a night like tonight, you know, I think we'll, we'll take the point and um, we'll take the fact that we worked really hard and, and stayed uh, together as a team, um, and, and we'll move forward. Tam, the man that does it all, guys. Back to you. That's right, Lyndon. And I'll tell you what. Tam McCandewiri with a huge vote of confidence from Coach Neil Collins at training yesterday. Absolutely, and as you mentioned, new coach comes in, he gives you that, you know, almost like a new life, if you will. You weren't even on the bench, you were uh, up doing the commentating, now you're down there, and we know he's got the ability to do it, and he showed that tonight. All right, it's time for the Lunazul tequila shot of the game. Not many good shots on goal, could not find the back of the net today, but how about Leo Fernandez? He was a game changer as he came in late, and that shot denied by Christensen. Still, it was a great one, and it is our Lunazul shot of the game. So our shot of the game from Leo Fernandez, brought to you by Lunazul. And we've got more from Al Lang Stadium and the postgame show coming up next. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. It's time to celebrate and save at Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale. Save 35% on furniture and mattresses. Or get 72 months no interest on new styles to celebrate your home. Going on now at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Hurry in and 0-0, you're scoring a picture-perfect moment right now for Yakin Graf and Rowdy's fans as Tampa Bay gets the point tonight as they took on Atlanta. Drew Felios with Eddie Rodriguez, and it's time now to spotlight the Rowdy's goalkeeper, Akira Fitzgerald. He is standing by with Lyndon Blake. Akira, it was a tough physical game tonight, but you were still able to come away with a clean sheet. Yeah, you know, happy with that, uh, disappointed with the result, but I think the guys really battled. We had a couple chances at the end to, to get all three, so there's some positives to take from the game and then a lot of things to learn from. So I think we'll uh, just keep moving forward and, uh, you know, put this in the memory bank and keep moving. Got a little scary there, close to the end. Take us through on those last shots from Atlanta. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was... When it's 10 v 10 and it's going to be an open game, there's going to be chances both ways. So um, I think Tam did a great job at the end, just to get a small touch on that cross, and their guy wasn't able to get it cleanly. Um, so yeah, Tam did a great job there and helped us out. Thanks. Yep. All right, Akira Fitzgerald 
doing his thing tonight was not challenged often but every time he was he was certainly up to the task he was and you talk about yes yeah, so i got to text nico he's got the ability to own his box he does that he comes in he owns that this great cross to the far post by how about that little touch right there just enough to keep it outside the goal well, it's really interesting, too, the Rowdies' goalkeeping situation. You've got Fitzgerald, who's playing great soccer right now. You've also got Cody Mizell, who has not played now the last three games, and he really didn't do a lot to lose his job. How should the Rowdies proceed moving forward? Yeah, well, I think it's one of those situations, Drew, that uh, the new coach, Neil Collins, wanted to come in and shake things a bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, co uh, you know, he was just one of those casualties, if you will, of making changes. And he, just not he didn't do anything mm -hmm. wrong. And, of course, now you bring Fitzgerald. But now, at the same time, you can look at it this way. You have two great goalkeepers who are battling for that number one job. So that's the way to look at it because they both have gotten results, especially clean sheets for the Rowdies. All right, clean sheet tonight for Akira Fitzgerald as the Rowdies were able to keep Atlanta off the scoreboard. It was 90 minutes plus of just real, real tight soccer, physical soccer. Wasn't always pretty as well, but the Rowdies do manage to get the point. It's a big point here tonight. It is because, you know, once you, you say you go 10 against 10, a lot of space you got to cover, and they never lost, you know, they never got out of the game. Yeah, it was 0-0. They were not able to capitalize a couple of chances. When you talk about Leo Fernandez coming off the bench, mm -hmm. he almost scored, wasn't able to capitalize, but yet they were right there, just one shot away. But I like the fact that they came out swinging, even with three forwards right at the end, they won it, and I like the fact that Neil Collins is going forward and wants to win games. How about the substitution tonight? Alex Morell coming into the game for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Right now, he is standing by with Lyndon. Alex, you came off the bench pretty hot, got a lot of chances there towards the end. What was your mentality when you came in the game? Uh, just to provide a spark. Uh, that's what Neely tells me to do every time I go in. Uh, obviously, we had to play a little bit defensively because we have, it was a man down on both sides, but as soon as I get the ball, attack, go forward. Unfortunately, I think I should have maybe cut in, had a few other shots. I crossed them instead, uh, but that's all right. Uh, so, 0-0, zero, zero, point. We'll be back. And you're back here next week. Being from Lakeland, what's it like playing here at Owling Stadium from a pretty local crowd? Yeah, it's really cool. I've talked about it a lot, so I'm sure the fans have heard. But I, I, I just I love it here. I really do. I see my family all the time. Uh, these fans, I mean, just after the game, everyone's up here just cheering for you, and that means a lot to me. So, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Guys? All right, Lyndon, thanks. Alex Morell simply do as a Tampa Bay rally. He, he he was feeling it from the moment he checked into the game. No, absolutely. He talked about coming in and providing that spark. Well, he did that and then some. I know there's a couple of chances he regrets. He said, well, maybe I could have cut it inside. But that's your life as a forward. Great shot near post. And he's just trying to get things done. So rally. Alex Morell and Fernandez making a difference tonight. Not enough to get a goal, though. Scoreless draw, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. More after the break. If you're new in town and working on your dreams and you don't know what you need, we got the perfect plan for you. My blue, my blue. We are here, we're here for you, for you, for you. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Best tailgate, brisket. No, real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. Dude, subs. Hot dogs. Chili dogs. No, Dodger dog. It's gotta be crawfish. Now you talk burgers. Seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Hum what? You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day. Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. Grab yourself a Coke. It's tailgate 101.
Welcome back to Al Lang Stadium. Players continuing to unwind, and the fans are as well after an emotional scoreless draw, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Now, it's interesting to see how this matchup tonight is going to affect the standings. Tampa Bay coming in in seventh place in the Eastern Conference. So looking to move up. Let's see if they got some help tonight. Rowdies will actually slide down to eighth place as Bethlehem very slowly creeping up. And you see that log jam now, six, seven, and eight. Red Bulls, the Steel, and the Rowdies tied, vying for a playoff spot. See the top with Cincinnati, Louisville City. Hounds as well from Pittsburgh. Charlotte Independence right now in fourth. Yeah, and those are some of the teams that we either have played against or we're going to, we're going to play. So you got to take care of your chances. Games like this are always going to put you back because these are teams that you should have beaten them. Or, uh, you know, you can go on a little run, especially having two home games coming up the next two weekends. Tons of soccer still to be played. But here's a look at what happened around the league. Cincinnati going to win it over Red Bulls, too. An emotional week in Cincinnati after getting that MLS nod. Bethlehem over North Carolina FC. You've got Charlotte taking care of Ottawa, Pittsburgh over Richmond, and then Nashville and Penn. Nashville with a 2-0 lead. Keep in mind, Nashville comes in here to Al Lang Stadium next week. Upcoming schedule for Tampa Bay. Talked about Nashville, Penn FC, Charlotte Independence also, and Toronto makes the trip south. Yeah, those are the games that you got to take care of here, you know, uh, at home, get three points. And you talk about we slid to the eighth. You want to keep adding points, especially at home. Next home game for the Tempe Rowdies next Saturday, June 9th. Come here to the Park Outlink Stadium. Just a tremendous experience. Or you can watch us on this TV. Tampa Bay coverage starts at 7 p.m. in the pregame show with Lyndon and Eddie. So Tampa Bay Rowdies get the one point, Eddie. And now they look ahead to the second half and the summer. It should be a fun summer. They do. I think as far as as long as they keep adding points, I know it was one, it could have been three, but the fact that they're playing well, the fact that they've changed their momentum, the fact that they provided that spark, especially with our new coach at the helm, Neil Collins, he's doing a great job. All right, thank you so much for watching. It was an emotional ride here tonight for Lyndon Blake on the field, Eddie and our fabulous crew. I'm Drew Felios. Thanks for watching. Time now for our match in five.
vibe. It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Life, it's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. In the Tampa Bay area, the weather can change in an instant. Especially during storm season, it pays to stay on top of it. That's what makes the free TVO weather app so indispensable. You can track approaching storms with animated radar that zooms to your location. And you can click on the future radar button to see where the weather is heading. Don't get caught in the rain. Download TVO weather today. Go to tbo.com weather to get started.